more than the absolute gay pivot. It's the fourth day. Hello and welcome to 2021's APSA Cape Epic Stage 3, Saronsburg, in the beautiful bowl that uh, surrounds Tilbach, the fourth oldest town in South Africa. And a stage to savor today as they loop in and around these beautiful mountains. It's going to be brutally hard. It's going to be hot. The temperature is rising. The intensity is rising around this incredible race as these riders journey around the beautiful Western Cape. It's a stunning place to be and a wonderful place to ride mountain bikes for eight glorious days. It's the uh, Apsa Cape Epic's fourth visit to Tilbach. 2016 was the last time Saronsburg was uh, visited and the beautiful Church Street will be part of today's race as they race down this historic uh, street lined with national monuments and rejuvenated and rebuilt after the devastating earthquake of 1969. Hello and welcome. Nice to have you with us. Thanks for joining us wherever you are in the world. It is another glorious day in the Western Cape and we bring you high drama, excitement and great mountain biking uh, from the stage three of the Absa Cape Epic. Annika Langfeld, good morning. Good morning. Lovely to be here again and what a day we've got today ahead of us, I think. Yeah, today is going to be another very intense and hectic day. Um, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, it's a little bit uh, shorter than yesterday, but same amount of climbing, so it's really going to be a tough one and a lot of single track also. Right, 91 Songo Specialized Neil Gardner have been uh, dominant both in the men's and women's, more so, more dominant in the women's than, than in the men's. Do you see it, uh, those two teams uh, emerging uh, unscathed again today as, as the leaders? Well, they've re certainly revealed themselves as the strongest uh, in the race. They seem to just have that little bit extra over the other teams. And uh, we've reached the middle of the race now. We're almost at the halfway point and really in the thick of it. So if the marathoners uh, have, a, have a plan, it, it'll probably be today that they're going to start having to action it uh, because uh, time is running out for their campaigns. Yes, it is the cross country. If you look at 91 Songo Specialized uh, in the men's team, they've got a cross country world champion in Jordan Saru with uh, Matthew Beers, who's a marathon specialist. And the women's team, uh, Sina Fry and uh, her partner, Laura Sticker, two uh, really, really classy and fast cross country racers, young and uh, making the debuts here. It is now the questions will start being uh, asked and, and perhaps answered by these riders as they head into the deep end of the Apsa Cape Epic. So, stage number two. Started in series, finished at Saronsburg. It took in the Witzenberg Valley. It was the Queen stage. The Apsa Cape Epic is one of the most spectacular mountain bike events of the year. Its phenomenal vistas are juxtaposed with the pain and suffering that the riders go through over this eight-day stage race. This is the 17th edition of the South African event where teams of two work together to cover the 620 kilometers and climb a staggering 16,000 meters. Both professionals and amateurs complete the same course, starting with the prologue in Cape Town, traveling through the Western Cape to finish at Val de Vie in Palm. Today's stage two is a transitioning stage from Ceres to Tilbach. Stage two is the Queen stage. The riders leave the Ceres Valley and head into the Witzenberg Mountains. It is undoubtedly one of the most challenging areas for riding, with the dual track giving way to long sections of single track. It is paramount that the riders position themselves before the final brutal valley climb to the water point. The bone-rattling old wagon trail descent rounds off the day as they finish the 96 kilometers in the Saronsburg Wine Estate. In the yellow zebra leader jersey, Team 91 Songo specialized with Jordan Saru and Matthew Beers. Their closest rivals in the GC are Team Canyon Northwave MTB, followed by both Bulls teams. The pack leaves series for today's transition stage. They all sit in a bunch for the first section of the race. The young cross-country specialist Sina Fry and Laura Stigger from 91 Songo Specialized are in the women's leaders' jerseys for today's Queen stage. The marathon experts of Salusmed and Faces CST are two and three in the overall ranking. The gun goes off and the teams head out into the Ceres Valley. They have an incredible day of South African mountain biking ahead of them. The top three teams in the GC riding together through the Ceres Valley and staying together all the way up the old Gedo Pass. 
The fourth team in the mix is the Computer Mania team with Adelaide Morath and Shirley Redeker. The lead group cross the Witzenberg Valley and head into the forest for the final ascent of the day at the 70 kilometre mark. The leading men's group are racing through today's technical terrain and the beautiful single tracks of the Witzenberg Valley. The bunch still consists of 10 teams just biding their time and putting a plan together. All the favourites are in the mix. Team Canyon Northwave are sitting second in the GC and make the first attack of the day. They split the leading group and it's only the leaders 91 Songo Specialized that go with them to protect their GC lead. On the final rough and rocky wagon trail descent towards the finish line, Jordan Saru and Matthew Beers take the lead and put on a masterclass in downhill riding. The terrain flattens out and it's Matthew Beers, the local South African champion, taking the lead and bringing home their second win, two out of three so far. Andre Sjöwald and Martin Stosek from Team Canyon Northwave MTB managed to limit the damage and cross the line 26 seconds later. Team Bulls are having another good day in the saddle. Uwe Suber and Simon Schneller finishing third, one minute and 46 seconds down. The men's elite podium is propped up by yesterday's winners, Team Bulls with Uwe Suber and Simon Schneller. Second for the second time is Team Canyon Northwave with Andreas Sjöwald and Martin Storsek. And today's winners, 91 Songo Specialized Jordan Saru and Matthew Beers. They retain the yellow leader's jersey going into tomorrow's Stage 3. In the women's race, the group splits on the top of the valley climb. African leaders Strauss and Lille are dropped, as are Luthi and De Fruit. It is once again the Swiss-Austrian pair making the decisive move. As the gradient kicks up, they pull the trigger and extend their lead on the final climb. They are flying down the final white knuckle single track to descent towards the finish down. line at Saronsburg Wine Estate. Team 91 Songo Specialized the celebrate their third consecutive win, while Team Salusmed come in second and faces CST in third. The women's podium looks the same as stage one, with faces CST of Candice Lill and Mariska Strauss taking third and retaining the deep red African leader's jersey. Second going to Team Salusmed, Ariane Luti and Robin de Fruit, and three out of three wins for 91 Songo Specialized, Sina Fry and Laura Stigger with a lead of just over seven and a half minutes in the GC. So that's how it all unfolded on stage two, the Queen stage, confirming uh, the results. They're 26 seconds behind. Sjöwald and Stosek had a really good day, just keeping themselves in the mix there. Uber and Schneller, Team Bulls, uh, they're the marathon men. And with some experience, deep experience there with Ushuba, uh, they could well be coming as strong as the race uh, progresses. Becking and Diaz are making their presence felt. And De Porto and Rabensteiner had a very good day for Trek Pirelli yesterday, just two minutes adrift. To Toy and Base continue to lead. Oh, Pagi, you still in the African jersey. They won that stage for that category yesterday. Confirming all these results down to the uh, top ten, the young uh, South African uh, combinations here. Plenty of them in the mix here, which is good to see from uh, a South African perspective, Klaas and Schumanns from uh, Belgium down in 13th place. And Salale and Debele, a first stage win for them in the Exaro category. The Exaro PwC Academy riders doing really well and putting themselves in the mix for the overall. Consequently, this is how it stands after stage two. Sjöwald and Stosek, 2.13 back. That is by no means a comfortable lead at this stage for 91 Songo Specialized, but they will wear the yellow jerseys on stage two. Uber and Schneller now in the third, surpassing Fry and Stiebjan, who had a battling day yesterday and lost touch with that lead group. Becking and Diaz in fifth place. Poron Rabensteiner in sixth place. The toy and uh, base inside the top 10. Joining them as uh, the Apps African contenders team type Dev Nana Time and Ibuko Giant closing out the top 10. And uh, Colombo and Zanotti after their torrid uh, stage one, well they're clawing their way back as best they can in 13th place. Lorenzo Leroux and Lolan, Loyanda Tobangunya didn't win yesterday but they lead the Xaro category. Brian Stigger dominant again, although a minute and two seconds doesn't suggest that, uh, but it was that descent off uh, the wagon trail that uh, saw them just extend their lead over Luthi and De Groot.
But Lil and Strauss, 435 back, they had a puncture on the descent of the wagon trail, which cost them time. And they've had a, a trouble every day. They had a fall the previous day. Marath and Redica still in touch in fourth place. Ravi and Preen, 12 minutes and 16 seconds behind uh, on stage two. Ryan Stigger lead by seven and a half minutes. And Lutin de Groot are going to have to start working out a strategy to try and close that gap as best they can over the next day, perhaps today and tomorrow. Lil and Strauss, 18 minutes adrift, as I said, uh, crash on stage one, a puncture on stage two has been uh, very detrimental to their hopes. Marath and Redeka in fourth, and Jenny Stenerhaag, a winner in 2017 with Amy McDougall of Fairtree now in fifth place. In the other categories, the Stark and Stark who won the stage yesterday in the mixed. Craig Uran, Andrew Dubonage took the stage winning the Dimension Data Masters because, not to say that they wouldn't have won the stage, but uh, the uh, leaders up until that uh, stage were the Bulls legends, Alvin LeCarter and uh, Carl Platt. They withdrew yesterday due to illness to uh, Carl Platt. Brenchens and Vessels won the stage by four and a half minutes over Bucher and Gerber. Overall, no change in the Virgin Active mix to all the Grandmasters, but overall now, Craig Uriah and Andrew Dunaj of Ristonic lead by 24 minutes, a considerable lead over Müller and Bachmann, the Swiss pair, with Lont and Rometz uh, in third place in the Dimension Data Masters. The racing still tight in the Grandmasters, although Brenchens and Vessels finished with the, the uh, leading women yesterday. They are now six minutes clear of Bucher and Gerber. So what's in store today? Uh, an out and back loop around Sir Ronsberg and Tilbach, this wonderful bowl and some beautiful new trails created. The bone trail early on is going to be a really big challenge for the riders. Technical riding, lots of single track today. A high percentage of the riding today is uh, on single track and then uh, the vast uh, majority of the rest is on rough farm trails. Funty's Pass comes late in the stage today and that could be a telling moment in today's stage. The Land Rover Technical Terrain, the uh, Boss, comes after that. That could be key, the climb at the end of the day, Annika. Oh yeah, very key. And I'm interesting, or curious to see what the team tactics today will be. Uh, are, will everybody be aiming for that last climb and last des des descent to actually, you know, burn the last matches uh, for today? Or will they try to make a move beforehand? And that's... Um, Looking uh, at the team sales met um, and seeing how they have approached each day, stage uh, so far, in my opinion, they should try and really put down some, some pressure early on to, to try and fatigue uh, the Team 91 Sunco Specialized. As I see it by now, that's, that's the only card that they haven't played and that's now is a good day. They need to start playing that card if they have ambitions uh, to go for stage races in this race. Yep, it is the two cross-country young riders, Fry and Stigger, have been dominant, but they're heading into a territory that they haven't been before. Fry's ridden four days of the of the Swiss Epic, but uh, leading the race here with the pressure on, uh, they need to. You, you feel that the marathon specialists now is the time to to apply some pressure and test them, mm. put them under. Yeah, you know? yeah, true. Because it uh, seems like each stays, uh, stage uh, until now, um, Sina and Fry. They have arrived uh, relatively fresh yeah. towards the end of the, the stage, and in my opinion, somebody should try and fatigue them early on in, in the in the stage to see how much will they still be firing if they were fatigued or put under pressure right from the gun. We'll see how it all unfolds. So we moved from uh, the. So Koa Bockerfeld, the series area through the Witzenberg Valley and now into uh, the heart of the Bula, Tilbach, uh, the fourth oldest town in South Africa. And this uh, beautiful Church Street is uh, historic in many ways. There are 32 national monuments lining the street and uh, it'll be the scene of a hotspot sprint today that I mentioned at a hotspot sprint on the uh, tar road there. It's a nice we've innovation. Been, we've been traditionally seeing the hotspot at the peak of a climb or in a, after a particularly tricky section and this time we have it as a sprint. Something different mixing it up uh, 
bit more spectacular and um, perhaps a little bit more open as well. There will be some uh, some fierce racing for that. So it's a prize money at the at the hot spot and also some pride as well. And um, maybe a tactical opportunity for some of the uh, some of the riders. They often use it as a as a tactical chance to get away and um, perhaps as a springboard for a move later in the day. So they rolled away from uh, Saronsburg's uh, wine estate this morning at 7 o'clock and beautiful uh, sunshine, great conditions. Uh, it seems like a long time ago that we had the rain and the mud of uh, Table Mountain because the conditions of the last two days, three days have been beautiful. That was the men's elite. Uh, this is the women's elite batch starting uh, on their own as they have done for the last number of years. And uh, we caught up with a lot of the riders, a lot of the uh, the sharp end of the race before the stage started. Jordan, Matt, the first thing I noticed is there's hydration packs on your back and it's something I haven't seen in the last couple of days with you we hardly ever see in the, the elites. Yeah, Jordan's been riding his actually the last, well, since stage one and um, I've jumped on the bandwagon for today because it's going to be a bit of a scorcher. It's going to be about 38 degrees. You think you're ready for that, Jordan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm used to, to train on the heat uh, for the Olympics, so yeah, uh, I'm ready for that. Now there's some nice new single trails that no one's discovered. The last couple of days you've been lucky because Matt knows the route and he's trained on the route. What is your plan for today? Yeah, just to, to control and uh, let's see if we can manage to, to be in front. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see how the other team uh, will, uh, will push or not. Well, good luck, guys. Have fun out there. Thank you. Team Bulls, how's the feeling ahead of today's 35 to 38 degrees temperature? Yeah, feeling is good. Uh, after three stages or uh, three days on the podium, it's nice. And uh, today will be another hard stage for sure. And uh, also, as you said, the weather will be very, very, very hot. So it's important to drink and eat from the beginning. Keep yourself dehydrated and not dehydrated. There's some nice single tracks coming out that are brand new that no one's ever tested. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah, I really like the stages here at the Cape Epic and I love the trails and I'm happy to be here and we are ready to rock this stage, yeah. There is going to be quite a difficult climb that everyone's talking about, Fancy's Pass. How's the team feeling on, on that and what is the plan out there? Yeah, we know this climb from last year, we um, did it once time and it's really steep, especially at the end and yeah, you have to be 100% there and be ready to give all what you have, yeah. Well, good luck, we'll see you out there, be safe. Okay, let's go. Morning guys, expected highs of 38 today, how are we feeling about those conditions? Um, yeah, so far we feel good. Um, we are looking forward for the steepest climb of the, the whole Cape Epic. So that's usually where we can uh, play our cards. And we had a better feeling yesterday after the stage. Or like we have better feeling day by day now. And I look, we look forward for it. And well, absolutely, because Fancy's Pass is where everyone's expecting you guys to show off what you guys are made of. Yeah, we will see. I think we can have a good day today. <clears throat> and as Andy said, the, the steepest climb, we will for sure try for some something. Yeah. Well, we're keeping an eye on that something. Good luck, guys, and have fun. Yes, thank you. Let's see your team. Were they happy with that? Were you happy? So those were the uh, leading protagonists in the men's elite race ahead of their stage. What about our leading women? This is uh, footage from earlier, just after they started, and we managed to catch up with uh, some of the leading teams just before they left the start. Ariana, Robin. A hydration packs, is that necessary for a day like today? 35 to 38 degrees expected out there? Well, it definitely helps. I find that it's much easier to drink with it. Um, and the USVs are super comfortable. They really don't uh, rock around or anything. So for me, it's just really good. Then I'm really sure in the first two hours I hydrate very well. Um, and then, yeah, I, I grab some bottles along the way. 
And for you, Robin, it's not something that you normally ride with. No, definitely not. So this will be the first time racing with one. Um, but yeah, I, I trained with it the other day and uh, realized that yeah, through single tracks where it's tricky, you need to concentrate, you can't take a hand off a bar, tough to hydrate and we know it's going to be super hot today. So rather make sure you hydrate. Well, be safe out there, have fun. We'll see you on the finish. Cool, see you there. Thank you. So the thoughts of uh, Ariane Luti and Robin de Groot, uh, both taking the hydration packs out there. Um, and uh, it's becoming becoming a bit of a thing. Look at them streaming through the Tui Onkerselen uh, vineyards here. One of the, the oldest uh, wine estate in this uh, region. And uh, absolutely beautiful it is. A stunning morning, but as uh, all the riders have uh, alluded to and the hydration packs will tell you, it is going to be a hot day. Um, these riders uh, perhaps won't feel the, 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 the real oven that uh, the back of the field will feel, but the, the intensity at which they're riding certainly does uh, compensate for that. They will be, they'll be suffering, that's for sure. So early stages, uh, legs will be a little bit fatigued after well, two long days and, and the prologue, Garnica. For sure, most riders will be feeling it uh, by now. And uh, whenever a stage uh, starts out like this with some flat rolling, uh, easy rolling sections, uh, it's a good opportunity to, to kind of get the body going, uh, get the legs going um, and just warm up uh, in general and get yeah, your system ready for the day ahead. Um, but it's also a good point where maybe you can catch some of your arrivals uh, yeah, on the backside, on the little bit, how do you say, like... On the back foot. On the back foot, exactly. Yeah. Um, and in my opinion, by now we have seen the teamwork of some teams, like exactly how they execute each stage. Uh, and it's quite clear to their rivals what the uh, strategy is. And if they, if they have ambitions and want to try something, they should try to interfere with those plans in some way. Well, look at this. This is the lead group. Really a little bit of a gap there. But right up front there, you caught the red jerseys. The Apps African leaders, uh, Philip Bass and Peter Detroit. So they're looking to uh, put themselves in the frame. Perhaps so that I mentioned data hotspot. This is the category leaders, the Masters there, Duvenage and uh, Uriah, the Starks, the Xaro leaders, and uh, Vessel and... Uh, Brenchens, the uh, Grand Masters leaders. This is a competitive batch, almost as, uh, if not anything, more competitive than the, uh, than the elites, the, the uh, different categories in here. And you can bet every team in each category knows who their closest rivals uh, are in here. And we'll be keeping a uh, sharp eye on them as they head out on stage three. So top ex-professionals here, some... Uh, Right, young stars in the Xara category. This is a sad sight. Peter Prus of Team Encapsulations and Manuel Plim, the, uh, his partner, and walking the bike in. A disaster for this pair, who were 12th going into today's stage. They had a difficult day yesterday. They lost a lot of time yesterday. But this looks absolutely awful for uh, Peter Prus and Manuel Plim. Plim is riding. Pr Bruce is carrying his bike, the Estonian, and uh, well, this is uh, going to not end happily, but uh, I wonder if they'll continue. <laughs> there's, there's, there's is a bit of a solution. Let's hear what, what happened. Yeah, we're coming down the downhill, and there was like a small jump, and the rear wheel just exploded, and it's like in half, so we cannot do anything. And uh, yeah, first time here, so I'm devastated. It was uh, like hard to get here even. We had two weeks to do it with visas and everything. So we get it, get here last minute. And then every day we have problems, bigger and bigger. And today we had good legs. Tried to get back to the top 10 in general. And now this, and I don't know. I just tried to walk the 20 kilometers to the attack zone and maybe we can ride to the end in the, in the time limit. Thanks, guys. Well, more devastation in the women's race here. This is Mariska Strauss and Candace Lil of Faces CST. A little coming together and just on their left is Computer Mania's Cherie Redeker. So they must have had a little bit of a coming together. The road a little bit rough and, and loose there. Yeah, it's uh, especially in the morning when the sun is low. Uh, sometimes vision can be a little bit tricky. I don't know exactly 
what the situation was here, but speaking from experience, I can tell you sometimes vision is super difficult because you have the sun, the low sun in your eyes and you're going into unknown uh, terrain. Um, yeah, it will be interesting to hear what actually happened here. I hope they, they are all uh, fine and, and, and able, capable of, of continuing here. Yeah, Cherie has lost a lot of time. She was trying to find uh, something. She dropped perhaps a multi-tool uh, in that grass and her partner wasn't there. And uh, that last shot we saw of the group, she wasn't in that group as uh, Mariska Strauss and Candace Lill trying to work their way back on their wheel there. Um, so they are going to be trying to get back and uh, I think they did manage to get back but a uh, real disaster for computer mania this morning Adelaide Morath and Cherie Riddica in a spot of bother meanwhile this is the men's elite group and the team not in there that we saw a little bit earlier are this pair that's Philip Bass and Peter de Toy of Team Paga Eurosteel there we go. Uh, early dip there, Neil. Well, we're getting reminiscent of uh, Philip Bass. He's been known for his long breakaway attempts and uh, can be a really good springboard, as we said earlier, for uh, an attack really early on. Um, he'll be relying on the relaxed pace of the main peloton or the main group at the front um, and uh, take advantage of this and get a bit of a gap. And about a minute at the, uh, the Dimension Data hotspot. I'll definitely take, um, be glad to take some prize money there and uh, we'll have to see whether or not they keep that momentum up and uh, it's a long way to go if they want to make the full 91 kilometers all on their own. Absolutely, this is the women's group now. Again, we don't seem to see the computer mania pair in this group, but uh, good to see the South African uh, jerseys back in that group there. So they are intact as is the leading team. 91 Songo Specialized, Sina Fry and Laura Stigger. Looking ever so comfortable once again. Um, they, they just seem like they're really complete and they look like they've done this race before. They look so experienced, they, they really do every single move uh, correctly. And it's uh, okay, and here we see actually them coming into the Dimension Data uh, Hotspot Sprint, Group Sprint, everybody all together. And also here, they managed to to actually take their sprint. They're doing it in a really, really beautiful fashion here, and they just seem to be strong in every aspect. They're very complete riders. And just a moral victory as well, just to show their dominance. And uh, it's all about what uh, we have a problem here. Teresa Ralph, yeah. Well, Teresa Ralph. This is not good for the South African rider. She's been at a great uh, career at the Absa Cape Epic, very long career. Um, having stood on the podium many times and he, and also having worn the South African jersey. Well, talking about the South Africa jersey, this is Bass and De Toy snaking up uh, some of these beautiful single tracks. 36% of today's route is on single tracks, so it's going to be a testing day for hydration, for feeding, and uh, for skills as well as they uh, head up on these trails. Look at the gap there. And uh, so they've sustained their attack. It wasn't just to go for that uh, Dimension Data hotspot, although that was uh, perhaps a little motivation to uh, attack early as they head down uh, these beautiful single tracks. I'll tell you right now, these trails today almost exclusively been designed and, and built by a team led by Dion Wilkins in the uh, Tilbach region. He's passionate about the sport. He's ridden a number of these events and he's put together a magical journey today for these riders. Oh, this is not good news. This is the Paiga Eurosteel team. And uh, Philip Bass and Peter de Toy in trouble. Well, it looks like they're making some trailside repairs. Could be the cause of a, could be the result of a crash. And the 33-year-old Philip Bass looks on. That's bad news. Disappointing for them. With them there is uh, Stefan Sam of uh, Team Bulls, and there the group catches them. Well, in fact, I think uh, they've been passed by the group perhaps already, but uh, that is not uh, good news. So it looks like their journey out in front is uh, over, and uh, they'll now be battling it out with the rest of the main group, which Philip is where we are right now. Philip Bays is an experienced rider. He'll know exactly what to do. He's been riding this race. Uh, he, in fact, his first Absa Cape Epic was in 2009, and the 33-year-old um, has won many stages. In fact, his first his stage winning campaign started in 2014. So highly experienced rider. And we were speaking about earlier his breakaways. Um, that was in 2014 when he was riding with Birkus. A dramatic breakaway. 
Back to the front. Got Jordan Saru in the front, just setting the pace, keeping things uh, at an even speed, making sure that uh, that the that there is no lull, keeping the pressure on, making sure their rivals have to work for it. Yeah, they're the Canyon Northway. They're also wearing the hydration packs. Team Bulls in there, Becking and uh, his partner in there as well. The Fabric and Rabensteiner and uh, Samueli Poro, both Bulls teams. All the main protagonists in this group. Also BMC KTM, Filippo Colombo and Yuri Zanotti after their troubled first day. They lost so much time there. They're looking to try and get back a lot of that time today. They uh, were second on the prologue in Table Mountain. A fantastic prologue. And the young team, the uh, Swiss and the uh, Italian, are really, they've been doing very well on the under-23 World Cup circuit definitely have the firepower and uh, we hope to see how they do today so how it all plays out and to see them ride to their full capabilities yes, just on the hydration pack Gerald we wanted to just uh, pick up on something that uh, which was mentioned in the interviews in that uh, over the years we've seen a higher proportion of single track come into the race and I think uh, we're looking at the percentages it's 30 per 36 percent of single track and it's a significant amount of um, one of single track where riders are not able to reach down and take a drink because if you can see these corners there is not much opportunity to reach down grab a bottle and take a sip so just to put that little nozzle in your uh, in your mouth and drink while you're navigating these trails makes all the difference you have uh, just keeping yourself it's all about hydration is all about taking small sips over a long period of time and not big gulps at certain periods uh, in order to uh, let your body absorb all the fluids and the carbohydrate substances in the fluid as well. Well, uh, unfortunately, we, we will have occasions when uh, the signal won't be uh, uh, as we would uh, like it to bring you uh, clear images from the trail. So uh, we'll uh, reconnect as soon as we possibly can the um, beautiful mountains surrounding Tilbach, uh, the uh, Witzenberg Mountains on uh, the uh, eastern side, the uh, Windhoek Mountains create this beautiful bowl around uh, Tilbach and Saronsburg, the finish line. So there's a look at the uh, women's time split at that dimension data hotspot at 20 kilometers. All together as they went through there, the top uh, six teams, Galileo Infinity spot, that was Teresa Ralph, it lost a little bit of time there. And then it expands out to Mitas Honey Custom Apparel and uh, Computer Mania nine minutes and 18 seconds yeah it's a devastating a really a rough start to to this stage and we saw pictures of uh, sherry rediger trying to straighten her handlebar and it looks like the the issues uh, that they they have really cost them a lot of time here not an ideal start to today's stage it's all about staying calm and staying focused and working their way slowly towards the front again these magnificent trails the bone uh, trail is uh, famed and fabled here and they'll be riding some brand new trails as well uh, in Tilbach the Tilbach mountain bike club oh here's trouble this is Becking and Diaz this is a major problem a broken chain for no, 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 no. the Dutchman and uh, the Portuguese rider but Scott were very much in the mix and now time leaking away as they uh, effect the repairs yeah, this is a really a stressful situation. Uh, you can practice these things beforehand to deal with these issue, issues under pressure. But once you're out there in the race, it's just different. You need to, you can, first of all, you can see you're in the terrain. You have to throw your bike in a bush and try to, to it's not an ideal working position and you easily can drop a, a link or something on the ground. Um, it's often good to have a strategy how to approach these situations. A good thing is to maybe the one who has the mechanical sets, sets the, the, the plan and the other one kind of works for him. Because if two try to fix the same issue, sometimes it gets really messy and, and very inefficient. So it's good to have one dictating and the other one uh, doing. S somewhat like a dentist and a... And a and a hmm, maybe that's why it feels familiar to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's so that is problem for the Buff Scott team. Definitely a difficult situation for them, and uh, they had a great day yesterday. Out, a great day out yesterday. Then uh, they're a team with the ones, their backup team with the ones that had the uh, broken chain. And uh, just on the on the mechanical side of things, uh, fixing a chain efficiently is one thing, but uh, being able to put out of your mind the the riders tearing up the road and putting minutes into the into you, I think 
that's what um, one of the, the other things that's really important to do is to put that out of your mind, uh, get the panic get the panic out of your mind and just uh, deal with the problem as it is. And the Bulls, of course, Carl Platt and Stefan Sam, and of course Urs Huber after, after Stefan Sam, uh, were masters at that. They were masters at just dealing with the problem, putting everything else out of their mind and then getting back on um, l in the moment. Is it, is it that, that switch? You're in race mode and then you're in mechanic mode. Switch off race mode completely, focus on mechanic mode, switch back race mode and so they can't. Yeah, exactly. And it's not an easy transition because mm. you don't expect to have mechanicals. So it's like you have to make that switch immediately. And of course, with a lot of experience, having had to deal with these things makes it a whole lot easier. But every, every mechanical is new and you need to be you need to have some sort of insight into your equipment and yeah. how it works and, and how to fix it if something is, is, is wrong. Well, this is uh, the area we're in around uh, Tilbach at this time of year after a very wet uh, winter. The dams are full, the uh, orchards are lush and start coming to bloom and they're starting to uh, fruit up. And it really is just the most uh, beautiful part of the Western Cape. It's uh, no less beautiful in, in March. It's just different at this time of year. And uh, the ridge line there, the Witzenberg Mountains, and then far in the distance, that dome that is Mostert's Hook uh, Mountain that you can see at the end of that range is uh, looking sort of in the uh, southeasterly direction. The Breda River cuts through down in that part, and then around to uh, the big uh, peak is Saronsberg, that last peak we come into sight there, and Snuchat Peak is the other major peak in this uh, range, topping out at around 1,800 meters. So it is a uh, stunning stunning area brought to you by this uh, beautiful drone footage that we bring to you live innovating all the time in the absa cape epic with our coverage of the event and yes sometimes uh, things conspire and we won't be able to bring you live footage just uh, of, of every uh, step of the way but uh, pretty much as best we can we'll do uh, uh, justice to the race and bring you all the action possible but uh, it's not bad this the postcard either no no <laughs> whenever i did these races i always loved going back and watching uh, all the footage and the, and the photos from the race because when you're in the race yourself you're you have to be super focused on on what's really just ahead of you and around you at that moment and you don't always have the time to to look around not if you're racing at the sharp end of the field this is Haley Preen of the Land Rover Ladies. More drama for Marie Robbie and Haley Preen of the Land Rover Ladies. And that's not a good sign. Phone no. ringing. And where is her partner, Marie? Here she is. Good morning. Um, we're on the route and we had a crash and I think there's a broken wrist. After water point two. After water point two. Is it after, after water point two. Yeah, we did okay. press the SOS button on our G spot. Um, okay. Okay, then we'll, we'll so stop this is the uh, Haley Green of uh, the Land of the Ladies who's holding her right wrist okay. up there right, uh, because that is where the trouble is. And this is Lachlan Morton of EF Education. Nippo and uh, his, right, his partner, Kenneth Carrea, and uh, Lachlan Morton. Well, he's a real character. What's the problem, Lucky? Not good. No. Nope. No chain. No chain. And here you see all the drama going down. And now we are on day four. And the fat fatigue is uh, starting to set in. And you, you're just a little bit less alert. And, uh, um, and you see it takes very little. And then everything goes wrong. So Lachlan Morton, uh, part of the EF Education Nippo uh, World Tour team, but he does a lot of alternate riding, and uh, well, this is pretty alternative as well for him and now without a chain. Meanwhile, the uh, African, African, uh, African women's leaders, uh, Strauss and Lil, together with the Grand Masters, are coming through this beautiful trail, the Bone Trail, and uh, Lucky just moving out the way to allow the uh, riders to come through. Yeah, they really look like they have uh, found their rhythm again. Uh, they didn't look too stressed. They're really just settling in and, and slowly moving forward. So, uh, that's a good strategy. So the Texone water point is at 28 kilometers. Not entirely sure where that is on this bone trail. I'm trusting that uh, Lucky Mort Lucky Morton uh, is able to walk up towards that and uh, then get uh, the uh, necessary support to get himself back on the bike. So Haley Preen, the South African road race champion, second uh, at the uh, 
head down cycle tour just a week ahead of this uh, event i'm sad to say that uh, the land rover ladies race is over which with what looks to be a uh, wrist injury fairly serious wrist injury perhaps a broken wrist tanya uh, marie rabi there just on the phone and alerting the uh, medics to uh, the problem they have and we could see from the body language that uh, we, we could pretty much say it was all over for yeah. the pair not good so it's drama plenty on uh, day three of the uh, 2021 absa cape epic day four bigger pardon stage three and this is how it stands after 47 kilometers that's at the second of the uh, water point tech zones in the men's race the top eight teams pretty much all together with uh, bmc ktm completing that top eight buffs got mtb buffs got mtb well that might change uh, might have changed because we did see them with a broken chain a oh, bigger pardon it was uh, it was it was uh, both teams uh, are yep. there that's six yep. and seven yeah position and uh, so they uh, that's where we are after 48 kilometers of this uh, sparkling beautiful day apologies we're not able to bring you uh, live footage consistently all the way through but this is back live we believe and uh, yeah this is live and riding with uh, clearly an issue there johnny hugerland there's a name to, to conjure with riding with rene hasselbacher johnny hugerland a uh, man who rode on the world tour and uh, famously was involved in that uh, crash on the tour de france back in uh, 2013 when he was knocked off his bike by a vehicle meanwhile this is Sarah Hill and her partner Vera Lossa of Liv Lapierre. The Liv Lapierre racing pair from uh, Sarah Hill and uh, Vera Lossa, the Namibian. Sarah Hill, another winner of the Apps African jersey and riding with Vera Lossa, the Nam Namibian, who would have been watching the Tokyo Olympics, Tokyo 2020. She was in the lead break up the road, the uh, main break of the day, in fact. And, uh, very experienced road cyclist, multiple Namibian champion on the road. Heben Rappensteiner and uh, Samueli Poro at the back of this uh, group. EMC KTM in there as well. They're going at high speed here with uh, Stefan Sam on board with Stefan. Can you hear us, Stefan? Keep watching his images, though. And yesterday, we had some great conversations with Stefan along, along the route. Almost, which could almost say unprecedented in uh, live broadcast, being able to communicate directly with the guys on the bike. And uh, see here, Team BMC KTM, they're at the back of this group, but uh, it's quite ominous for the others. This team has some serious firepower. If they can make it all the way to Fanti's Pass intact with a small select group, we expect them to make a big attack and uh, perhaps they'll be able to form an alliance with Team Canyon Northwave and uh, put 91 Songo Specialized under some pressure. We'll see how it all plays out. There's still a long way to go. They've still got to go through the two water points over three gorges and uh, through the valley yeah, before they reach that Fantis Pass at the 70K mark. The action should begin. Morning, Stefan Sam on the, the Bullsey bike. Can you hear us, Stefan? He, he, he well, could, he we're fighting a little bit the signal. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. We the, the signal, the audio uh, signal, isn't as uh, clear as we'd like to be able to hear uh, Stefan and his thoughts on uh, how things are progressing out there. But uh, suffice <laughs> to say that uh, we get an idea of just how fast these uh, riders are going through. It's a rough farm trail. It's, it's just on the edge of one of the uh, farmers' fields, and uh, we pass through many, many uh, farms in what is a traditionally fairly dry region. This really dry and, and, and loose this terrain. Yes, and if you look at the terrain, uh, we often look at the, the danger points in the route. We see the Land Rover technical terrain, which is, of course, the concentrated mountain biking section, the pure mountain biking section selected by the route designers. 
but uh, just as dangerous or just as potentially dangerous are these sections you saw back there the really grassy nature of the surface of the trail that can hide sharp rocks maybe a small piece of metal and uh, just as uh, likely to scup your chances of uh, of an overall victory or even just a stage a stage win that was uh, our Xara winners yesterday pwc won uh, going through the Tlotlo Selada and uh, Falasani Ndebele, who are nicely positioned in the uh, Xara race, so racing hard against Leroux and Tobin Gunya to try and uh, get back, uh, get onto the podium as Benjamin and uh, Michael and Janine Schneider go through the uh, second team in the mixed uh, race at the moment. And uh, this uh, is the team of uh, Theresa Ralph and Kim Lacourt. So they are really having uh, a torrid day. Uh, Kim Lacourt and Theresa Ralph. Well, like we said, they're in the thick of the, uh, the thick of the Absa Cape Epic. We're almost reaching the halfway point, and this is where it really counts. We've talked about the the hardships, all the things that can go wrong, all the obstacles along the way. The prologue was uh, was maybe you could say a physical test, and this is a test of everything, of the pure mountain biker, of the full mountain biking experience. And uh, Annika, this is where Sina Fry and, and Laura Stigger particularly. And all the other, I mean, they're, they're in the men's elite group alone, there are 32 riders who are riding this for the first time who are heading into areas of, of uh, okay, how are we going to, I don't quite know how I might get through here, or I know I'm going to get through here, but, so there's a lot of questions being asked now. For sure, there's a lot of unknowns, um, especially for the more uh, unexperienced uh, riders in, the, in this race. Um, but it looks like Sina and, and Laura, they're riding with such um, a great buffer uh, energy-wise that they, they, can, they, they can handle all these unknowns when they appear. Um, so far, they, they absolutely, they look like a seasoned combination. They really, really do. It's impressive to watch. Uh, it really looks like they've been doing this race before, which they haven't. Um, and in my eyes, uh, the only weak point in their relationship is like how will they handle when the fatigue really sets in, because they will get really, really tired as well, start feeling it, especially from now on. And will they start making mistakes? Will they start having mechanicals? Could they blow up because they, they miscalculate their efforts? Um, it will be interesting to follow. So what we noticed from that little uh, screen there is that the Buff Scott teams are no longer in that uh, group uh, with the big uh, mechanical they had, uh, the broken chain. I beg your pardon, one of the teams is in, the other team is, is not there, but uh, so that's the one that dynamic that's changed there. They're riding through an area they came through yesterday as they head back. They did a loop out to a sort of southwesterly direction to the Bone uh, Trail, and now they're heading back towards uh, Tilbach and then out deep into the uh, corner of the valley, which is where Fanti's Pass lies in wait. And uh, so much, perhaps, we, we're putting a lot of, lot of emphasis on it, but it comes so late in the race, on day uh, three, or fourth day, but uh, third big marathon day, that we are anticipating that that is going to be a critical phase of today's race. Yeah, definitely. And we can see the team BMC, KTM, cruising nicely at the back of this group. Um, when a team like them, they have huge issues, mechanical issues at the, the very start of the race and they can feel like they're losing a lot of time on the GC. A team like that can swap their strategies and start going for stage switches instead. Try to save the energy and then um, pointing out some stages and saying like, this is our stage, this is the day we're going to go for it. And I'm interested to or curious to see if today is the day that they are targeting. On paper, it should be good for them. Uh, there's a lot of uh, flat, uh, uh, fast rolling sections in between the single track sections. Uh, we know that they are strong in the single track sections, so if they can save a lot of energy between the single track sections, they have a huge advantage going into the single track. And, and the uh, single track as we uh, pick up uh, base and uh, Detroit getting cheered along by the school children as they ride through the Mbuko Giant, the other South African uh, here behind them, Mark, you bear and Tristan de Lange, but uh, the, the climb up Fanti's Pass, and then they go straight into the land over technical terrain at Askhaibos, which is a sensational piece of single track, but it's quite long. Um, so, so there's going to be that fascinating battle to get into that, uh, get to the top of the climb and get in there first. Mm, it'll basically be uh, another big bunch yeah. of sprint uh, of today going first into that single track. And it's all about knowing when exactly the single track comes, so you can start moving forward in the group and being well positioned uh, when it counts. 
and that's why it's always a good idea the night before uh, having a quick brief with your team your teammate uh, looking through what's uh, coming what's uh, on the menu for the next day and and if you have some local knowledge uh, if you know exactly okay this is where the single track starts it's always an advantage um, it's good to know it's good to be well prepared and have a strategy yeah it's it's exactly the local where the local knowledge really plays into uh, plays into the hands of the riders that have done the race. So it might not only be locals; it might be, for example, the bulls. They've raced, they've campaigned here for for many years. And in fact, in 2016, one of the riders lamented that uh, it was a rookie. It was uh, Pericles Ilias, who was the Greek the Greek rider, the Greek marathon specialist, and uh, former world champion. Lamented the fact that the bulls know everything; they know every meter yeah. of the trail, and. Uh, they said that uh, they some suddenly, without even knowing it, the bulls were suddenly at the front and it was absolutely at the critical point in the race. And uh, history shows us that uh, 2016 is when the bulls, that was Urs Huber and Karl Platt, won Urs Huber's first victory and Karl Platt's fifth. What uh, the point made early on the, in the interview from with Simon Sneller was that uh, they know Fundy's Pass. It's a new trail, new area, and it's not public uh, access uh, area, but they rode it, they got permission to ride it ahead of last year's cancelled event. So they, they have an idea what they're in for. So, uh, yeah, preparation um, is, is what it's all about. Homework, and uh, that's uh, key as... Philip Bass and Peter Detroy drill it here, looking at, they took the dimension data hotspot, they had a mechanical, perhaps a fall, and now they're trying to uh, get back on uh, to the back of that lead group. And towing, uh, they, they're towing along uh, the Buka Giant pair, Marco Hubert and Tristan De Lange. Well, these, uh, these riders will need to make a call now. Do they put in maximum effort just to get back on and uh, burn matches, so to speak? Or do they just take it easy and uh, wait to fight another day? They have got the red jerseys that are all the Absa African jerseys at stake. Most likely they'll try and keep a steady rhythm, but to spend all their energy just, just to get back into this group, uh, they'll, need to make, uh, they'll need to make a decision as to whether or not it's worth that extra effort. Seven riders, seven teams, beg your pardon, in this uh, group, and uh, it is a team without Hans Becking, a group without Hans Becking, and it was a DS, uh, the Babscott MTB leading team because uh, they've broken a chain. Their second string, Ruiz and Vergara, dare I say second string, their other team is in this group. As they transition across the valley floor here in uh, the uh, Absa Cape Epic Stage 3, and the farmers just uh, stopping and allowing the uh, riders to go through. And uh, again, all we can do is to thank the, the farmers for allowing the, 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 the race to go through the landowners and of course uh, the trail builders because without them we wouldn't have uh, these uh, incredible trails and the one man here in, in this club area, Dion Wilkins, amazing. Um, Dion Malherbe up in those series and the Hanukkah brothers in the Bitsenberg Valley, just incredible and many, many more all the way around uh, the Western Cape. Very special that uh, we get to, well, that the riders get, we get to see it and the riders get to ride. Some, um, some sections are completely untouched by a mountain biking tire and uh, and also not open to the public. Gerald, yeah. you alluded to it earlier. There are some public trails that the local mountain biking community can enjoy. And then there are other trails that are prohibited and only riders at the Absa Cape Epic have access to them in the race. Yeah, Mountain, Mountain, Mountain Bike Club about 10 years, nine, 10 years ago got uh, formalized and uh, they've, they've created uh, a really great mountain bike fraternity in this area and have been active in building these trails and creating access and, and building up the relationship between the farmers and the landowners. But if you want to come and ride in these parts, please contact the uh, Tilbuck Mountain Bike Club and uh, ascertain where you can ride. I'm sure one of the, the, the riders will take you out on, on uh, the journey. Sitting right at the back here, the BMC KTM along with uh, 91 Songo Specialized Matt Beers. Uh, you almost want to say they're chilling at the moment. Just. I think, yeah, they know what's coming. Relatively speaking. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's all relative. But it is it is all relative. But uh, the fact that Matt Piazza is not near the front is uh, leads us to believe that it's not necessarily a critical point in the race. He's happy to uh, take it easy, to follow the leaders, and um, get on board some hydration. He is wearing a hydration pack. We spoke about that earlier and how important it is to be hydrating throughout the stage, to take small sips over over a period of time. It's a more effective way of hydrating and refueling. And 
Matt Pierce, clearly an experienced campaigner and in the leader's jersey is in a good position. No. <clears throat> Thank you, Barton, wherever you are around the world watching us, thanks for joining us uh, and being part of our, our journey around this uh, Absa Cape Epic. Hope we we uh, enticing you to perhaps come and ride it one day. But if you want to know what it's like being in the thick of things and you, you have a particular question as we arrive at a, at a very significant uh, little section here, the uh, floating bridge that's coming up here, I think it's, it's uh, extraordinary. Uh, why not uh, connect with us and connect with Annika Langfeld because uh, no one is more experienced uh, that you can talk to right now than uh, the five-time former champion, world champion in cross-country and marathon. She's sitting right with us here, ready to answer your questions and uh, perhaps uh, give you insight into what it is like to uh, tackle this uh, event. Wow, beautiful views. Yes, and please use the APSA Cape Epic uh, social media channel yeah. uh, for your questions and they will be forwarded to us. Yeah, through... Uh, be it, be it YouTube, through uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is, uh, we'll get those uh, questions to Annika and uh, she'll uh, put you in the picture as we go around between the dams here. The uh, Thirsty Bridge, beautifully done. Absolutely stunning views. So, this little pump track. And the leading group all together at the moment as they. Uh, Bide their time, keep their powder dry for the challenges still to come. They've conquered the Bone Trail, Three Gorges, and Fonti's Pass at 6.2 kilometers, around 403 meters of accumulated climbing over that uh, phase. And that is to come. That is the serious challenge. And just after then is the Asakai Boss uh, Land Rover uh, technical terrain. As now we arrive at the, uh, the bridge that's been specially constructed over this dam. Floating bridge, courtesy of Thirsty uh, and the hydration that sponsors here at the 2021 Apps of Cape Epic. So they'll take a left and then swing onto the dam, and uh, all floating bridges are. Well, have been uh, part and parcel of mountain bike stage races around the world, but uh, South Africa for many, many years. They were much feared for a long time, and uh, now they're ridden as a matter of course. <laughs> Beautiful sight, the Thirsty Bridge here at the uh, 2021 Apps Cape Epic Stage 3. Maybe the riders just putting a little bit of extra concentration. It would be most undignified if uh, any of them went off track and uh, ended up in the water. Might be a welcome dip. It's going to be a hot day today, perhaps later on in the day when we see um, Stefan Sam just taking a... Did he take a breath or did he, did he hit one of the trees? I think he was just navigating some of the trees. It went from really bright sunset, sunshine into dark shadow and those transitions can, all, can always be tricky because the vision sometimes is a little bit challenged, especially riding as he is like at the very end of a big group. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of dust in the air and makes uh, vision even more difficult. This is uh, really stunning. The Reflections Guest Farm is where they're riding through and uh, they've agreed to uh, have the riders uh, ride through their land and, and have that uh, lovely thirsty bridge uh, uh, constructed over their, their dam. Yeah, still right towards the back, the BMC KTM guys uh, just uh, pushing themselves back and you can see just taking on uh, food, taking on nutrition, all critical factors to, to today. Remember these uh, riders have gone close to four hours on day one, close to four hours on day two. Their bodies are fatiguing, they're stressing all the time. So fueling is absolutely, you know, apart from riding your bike, eating is perhaps the next most important, eating, drinking, the most important thing uh, through, through this week. It is, it really, really is. And you cannot underestimate how much it means. Right now they're fueling for this specific race, uh, for this specific stage and for the moment right now, but actually they are also fueling for the, the coming days, the days ahead. Uh, you could get by on the first and second day with, without being like super concentrated about your nutrition and constantly consuming. Uh, but uh, at this point in the race, if you don't get enough energy, your recovery for tomorrow or the days ahead will be much, much worse. And so now it, it is really critical to, to get that on point. 
through the Frulicate farm now. As well as the Acre, they'll be heading into again uh, these farm tracks, making up uh, perhaps the, the lion's share around 40% of the uh, trailer. These, these, uh, they're not manicured, they're just uh, Jeep track, uh, relatively smooth in comparison to some of the, the rough trails that they are going to ride and have ridden. Uh, but snaking in and out of the orchards and the vineyards on these farmlands, this lead group, but just keeping a, a steady tempo. Yes, and uh, interestingly, a long line, which uh, normally when we see, in certainly in road cycling, when we see a long line, it means that the pace is high at the front. Uh, but the narrow nature of the trails uh, suggests that uh, it really is just, um, it's a group is mostly compact, mostly together, and not a lot of pressure being put at the front. And we did see a, a bit of a roll call with the titles earlier. Just to recap on that, we have Team Buff Scott Mountain Biking 2. That's the second team of Vergara and Ruiz. And uh, ever-present Canyon Northwave, 91 Songo Specialized, the race leaders, Trek Pirelli, both Bulls teams, and Team BMC KTM. And if we were to make a prediction, if we were to make a, a wild card selection for a winner of the stage today, it could easily be them. It's Team BMC KTM, that's Colombo and Zanotti, the, the young cross-country specialists. Uh, Fabian Ravenstein and Samueli Poro have, uh, I think, something uh, in the tank perhaps as well. They're uh, looking to uh, put their stamp on the, the event. Poro has been uh, on the podium and overall before. Uh, with Damiano Ferraro, so I think it's uh, that they're also in the mix here. Bulls have two teams, it's all beautifully set up here. Well, the Trek really have one stage is deep into yeah. the race, they know how to do it. They know they are really, if they have any um, advantage or any edge over their competitors, their physical characteristics are that they, uh, they, they seem to. We say that riders get better every day, that's not necessarily the case. That it's more like they're the riders who decline less than the others. If you were to look at it in pure output terms. And uh, if, uh, Gerald, are you going to be so bold as to say that uh, Trek Pirelli are in for the stage win today? I'll call BMC KTM. You're going for Trek Pirelli? No, I'm and not. <laughs> am I putting words in your mouth? <laughs> well, let's ask Annika. I'm suggesting that they will be very much... Uh, Oh, well, any of these teams in this group are going to be keen there. And again. True, but you could also hear Canyon Northwave MTB. Yeah. They were really excited ahead of this stage. They were like, we're looking forward to this brutal, super steep climb at the end of the race. You could feel like this is, this is our terrain. It. This is where we're going to push it hard. And they're in there first. That's uh, Andre Sivalt and uh, uh, his partner, Martin, Martin Storsek. And they, they, they're in their first race together here at the Absa Cape Epic. So you you almost sense they've now had three days. They're, they're nicely bedded in. They've got the lie of the land. They know who their the main uh, rivals are. They're not far off uh, the, the GC, two, two minutes and 13 seconds. We're in this, and we, this is our day. You feel maybe this is the day they're going to put the hammer. They're, they're sitting at the front of this uh, little uh, string at the moment. Uh, so yes, they could win the stage as well, and the Bulls could win the stage. Mm. I'm a fence sitter. It could mm -hmm. come down to fate. Give me time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, absolutely. But um, the team uh, 91 Sango Specialized had a clear strategy for yesterday, and that was kind of to get a first into the last descent, um, get a gap there, and, and, and try to extend that, build on that toward the finish line. And today could be a little bit the same. At least this, the nature of the course would invite for a similar tactic. and they had success with that tactic yesterday so why not go for the same tactic today absolutely ah it's all uh, on the table it's a feast to uh, to enjoy blossoms on the right and a younger orchard on the left absolutely stunning they are heading through these uh, farms Towards Bergplatz, the third water point. This is Blowbunk, Deflay, and Montrouge. These farms will be going through here. Stefan, are you with us? I, the, Stefan is with us, but he's not with us, if you know what I mean. He, we, we, we're not able to, to converse with him, but we occasionally see his, his images as they hug the river, little stream on the left hand side. And. Uh, 
continue just to tick it over. Real Epsicape epic day today. Really uh, tough challenge coming towards the end of the stage with that Fantis pass and Askai Bosch. And it's almost like a race within a, in a race there, that, that uh, climb, six, uh, just over 6 Ks, 403 meters. We focus here on the women and uh, the race leaders in the orange jerseys, Sina Fry and Laura Stigger with Ariane Luti and Robin de Groot are in uh, the first two positions. The Salus Med team keep an eye on 91 Songo Specialized. Mm -hmm. So the two leading women teams still together. Um, it looks like Salus Med is happy to let uh, Team 91 Songo spe Specialized take the lead here in the single track. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this is going to end once they get to the really, really steep climb. We can see Robin de Groot here is drifting off the back just a little bit. And it looks like they're a little bit on the back foot here. They're not the ones applying pressure. They're really letting Team 91 uh, Sanko Specialized dictate the race at this point. Well, we've got uh, word out on the trail. They have passed the 48 kilometer mark. And uh, as we saw there, it is two teams in the lead, 91 Sanko Specialized and Team Salas Med, with Team Faces CST two minutes 44 back and Team Fairtree, 5.46 back. Jenny Stenhag and Amy McDougall having they a better day coming. today. They have struggled throughout the week so far, but it uh, looks like they're coming into their own. Uh, Liv Lapierre racing there. We have the time checks at 6 minutes and 54 seconds. So all in for the first two teams, 91 Songo Specialized and Team Salas Med. Right all together, the face is CSD. We're not sure whether they'll be in a hot pursuit. They may just look to consolidate Yep. and uh, save their efforts because it's going to be a long week. And the big losers today, Computer Mania mountain bike, are the, uh, the day's big losers at this stage, having had a, a fall with uh, Cherie Riedeke, and they've lost uh, plenty more time. They were heading down through the Three Gorges Trail um, on uh, the first loop, if you like, out of Tilbach, and then heading down as they uh, go back out past Tilbach. They won't go through the town and then on towards where these uh, riders are, the elite men heading uh, towards the deep end of this beautiful valley. Stuchat Peak up there on the left. It is uh, truly beautiful, but it gets uh, more and more remote up here, and uh, they'll find Fanti's Peak. Uh, if you're riding up there on your own, you will wonder if anyone will ever find you if you decided to sit down there and have a long sleep, because it is very, very remote, and the single track that uh, coming off there is, is ex extremely tough. And I kept You've had someone ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see questions ticking in, so thank you very much for that. We'll try and cover most of them as good as possible. Um, the question is, what does the morning routine look like uh, for the pros? Well, most of us are very lucky to be able to sleep in camper vans at the venue, meaning we don't have to travel far to get to the start line. We are, we are right there, which makes everything so much easier. Uh, and you're not in a tent. We're not in a tent, so weather doesn't really matter. Uh, if it's uh, hot, we can turn on aircon. If it's wet, we have a nice roof over our heads, so it's really a, a privilege. Um, normally, the stage for us would start uh, 7.010 or 7.09, so we're starting a little bit behind the, the guys. Um, I would wake up maybe around 5 o'clock, so a few hours before. Uh, in the camper van, and in the camper van, we, we actually have our breakfast uh, in there, so we don't need to go outside of the camper van. I would wake up and I would have my breakfast ready, and I would literally go back to my bed and eat my breakfast under, under the, the cover. And it would be very silent uh, in the camper van at this point, especially during the end, towards the end of the race, where everybody's getting more and more uh, tired. So it's a, a silent breakfast in a half dark camper van under your cover and you can feel your legs are really stiff and maybe your body is also sore so you really want to move around <laughs> as little as possible. Are you a coffee drinker? Yes. You see, have coffee in the morning? So that's the thing. Um, I could go to the Woolworths. Uh, uh, they have nice coffee, coffee stations done, yeah. uh, at the venue but then I would need to 
first of all, I would locate that, uh, yeah, the wagon with the, the coffee. Uh, the, the pro camp is a little bit uh, outside of the, the normal camp, and we changed uh, campsites a lot, uh, meaning that sometimes I get very confused where to go because I would wake up the next morning and it's like, oh, everything looks different. <laughs> so I would, I would risk getting lost on my way to, to find some coffee. So most often I, we have a coffee machine um, in, in our little camp. So I would go out and get some coffee and go back to my, okay. yeah. And I would try to save as much energy as possible. Some riders uh, love to do a little bit of a warm, just warm up, just spin the legs a little bit. Maybe I would do that, uh, definitely I would do that for the prologue, but from there on I would go into energy saving mode and actually not spend too much energy before the, the start gun actually goes off. It's all about staying warm, staying comfortable and saving as much energy as possible. And eating, so what sort of breakfast do you have? Um, I would eat maybe some yogurt, muesli, oats, nuts, raisin. It's very simple, but it works, and I guess everybody has their preferences. Um, I remember my different partners. Um, a lot of them had the same breakfast like me, some, some oats, some uh, overnight oats, maybe have them soaked the night yes. over. Uh, I remember Kate Corny, she always uh, had uh, waffles. So she would actually have prepared the, the waffle mix uh, the night before, have it in the fridge, and then in the morning cook it inside the camper van. So that would allow me to wake up by the smell of fresh waffles, which was not too bad, to be honest. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? <laughs> no, but everybody has their own little routine, and you don't change much going into this race. You, you stick with what you know works. Very important. What sort of time would you go down to the start line? Um, I would I would go out and and, and um, just yeah talk with my staff if there if there's any last minute information that I need to know and I would tell the mechanics uh, I would just actually I would go for a little spin on my bike just basically around the camp just to make sure that the the gears work the brakes uh, working I mean our mechanics they sort out our bikes like very well and, and everything is working properly but you it's nice to just have that extra security that you actually shifted through the gears and tried the brakes and everything just before uh, you rode out to the start line you don't want to stand on the start line and re realize that you're you don't have the right tire pressure or stuff like that so you may just just a little spin around the camp to make sure that everything is fine and then basically from there make your way towards the start line there you go. I hope that uh, answers uh, the query that uh, was sent through to Annika. Thank you. If you want to connect with uh, Annika and find out what it's like to be uh, deep inside the, uh, the cauldron that is the uh, APSA Cape Epic, then uh, connect with, with us through uh, our social media platforms, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, APSA Cape Epic or Cape Epic, and uh, Annika will be able to... Uh, Sure, supply with uh, a very detailed and uh, interesting answer. The great with the great to see the uh, level of preparation yeah. that's required to excel and even just to survive at this race. And uh, right from the pro levels to to the amateurs, they um, the amateurs also need to be well prepared. They need to have all of their equipment lined up. They need to know um, what they're wearing, having tested the uh, the equipment that they've used before. Uh, many of them will have for their bikes repaired or at least serviced every single day. These are the ravages of the race. And um, the race is certainly a test of equipment. There's uh, no doubt that uh, there's, a, there's certainly an absolute epic graveyard of equipment. And uh, if it can survive, uh, if it can su survive this race, it's, uh, it, it passes the, the ultimate test. You know that Stefan Sam is, uh, has been um, very much an equipment, uh, an equipment fundy. He's, um, in fact, the, the race has spurned um, an invention of his. Um, we've seen him on the e-bike. He has won the race before. And one of the most important things to carry for any rider is a tire plug. Um, the riders are almost all riding tubeless tires. I think that's pretty much the universal standard at the moment. And a tire plug will just fill the hole that is caused by a sharp rock or a, a piece of wire or a stick or something like that. Um, plug is a, kind of a sticky, um, a sticky piece of spaghetti almost. That's what it looks like. And um, Stefan Sam has, uh, has been developing uh, for many years his, uh, his own method, his own um, version of, uh, of a plug, uh, which fits into the handlebars. And uh, he, has a, he has a team of, um, a team of guys to help him design. So, the uh, Epic has spurned many equipment 
um, evolutions, you could say. Well, we we talked about evolutions earlier about the hy the hydration pack. Yeah, it's uh, one of the things we've seen. Uh, we saw it first, in fact, uh, in the pro ranks. We saw Nino Schurter and uh, Florian Vogel riding them, and, uh, and uh, we we wondered what he what he was up to. And it uh, turns out he was uh, just want, wanting to stay very hydrated for the following day. He was uh, he was hydrating, and, uh, and uh, him and Florian Vogel were looking to target stages that year, the first year that they ra they raced at the Absa Cape Epic, and um, that trend is definitely. Uh, We've definitely seen more of it with some many of the riders today stocking up with their hydration packs. We've seen the Cannondale team use them, and um, they used it as part of the nutrition strategy to actually avoid stopping at the water points to stock up on water. They carried with them two extra liters, so they didn't have to stop giving them an advantage and uh, putting the other riders under pressure, having to chase after they had to stop and get uh, and get refueled. So the. Uh Women's uh, race has left that sort of almost first, uh, just uh, first two thirds of uh, the trail, which is the Bone Trail and Three Gorges. They are now transitioning across the uh, the valley and towards Tilbach. They'll go, they'll, they'll bypass Tilbach and head out towards where the uh, the men are riding now, and then enter the uh, real challenge of Funtys Pass. Mariska Strauss on the frontier with Candice Lill. They had a problem earlier today when uh, they were involved in a small crash, but uh, a small crash for them turned out to be a really significant one uh, in the wrong way for Canada, for computer mania because Cherie Ridica was involved in that. And sadly, Cherie lost a lot of time there. We're not sure how much time they've lost up to this stage, but uh, around about the 47K mark, they had lost nine minutes. So really, really uh, disappointing day for them. A hard fight lies in ahead for them. Bart Brenchens and uh, Peter Bessel, uh, the leaders in the Grand Masters. They spent a lot of uh, yesterday with the leading women's team and finished just behind them. Well, now they're sitting behind uh, the team of uh, faces of CST. And uh, Bart, of course, is in some ways Mariska's boss. <laughs> True. Yeah, it's the team that he's, Mariska rides for. That's true. He's just there making sure she is uh, okay. Uh, sometimes it can be good, good for the morale to have familiar faces uh, around you, especially in conditions like this where everything is just rough and you are suffering. And having you know familiar faces around you feels really good sometimes. Good for the for the motivation. You can see here most riders are actually carrying two bottles on their bike, and I can see another question coming through whether people would have water in one bottle and then in it some sort of uh, energy mix in the other one. Um, I can only speak from my own experience, but I would definitely carry uh, energy mix in both bottles. Whatever energy you can carry with you is worth doing it. If you were ca having one bottle with only water, that means you would have to have more energy in your pockets, uh, gel, spars, and so on. So really having that in your bottle is, is it's just a very good idea and an easy way to, to make sure to constantly get carbohydrates inside uh, your body. So this is the lead group of uh, men as they go up this beautiful uh, well, cement. They'll enjoy that for the time being. It's forgiving as we flip back to our leading women's uh, quartet. Four riders, two teams here. 91 Songo Specialized, Sina Fry and Laura Stigger. They are the overall leaders by seven and a half minutes over Team Salusmet of Ariane Luti and the rider at the back here, Robin de Kruert, the Swiss South African combination. The Swiss Austrian pair up ahead in that particular order. There's the Austrian Laura Stigger and uh, ahead of her, the short track world champion, Sina Fry, silver medalist at the Olympic Games, silver medalist at the World Championship, and a superstar. And one of just, a, and, and Laura, just a, a number of really, really good, I would say good, brilliant young riders who are making their mark on, on the mountain biking in the women's field at the moment. So the likes of Lona Lecomte, of Evie Richards and the like. So really good to see. Yeah, women's racing at the moment is so exciting to watch. It's a, there's a lot of good, good riders out there, top 10, top 15. All of them can, can go for podiums. It's really good for the sport. It's great watching it's always exciting and very unpredictable sometimes and that's what makes it so uh, 
riveting, it really does. So he's uh, four together. I wonder what the thinking is for Ariane and, and Robin here. How are they going to make uh, some inroads into that lead of seven and a half minutes? Mm -hmm. At the moment, you can see here they're really just drafting off of uh, Team 91 Sanko Specialized, happy to to just save some energy. It looks to me like they're all going to go and put the hammer down towards the end of the race. None of them have, as far as we know, made some serious attacks and moves uh, at the early parts of the stage. So Nine. it looks like it's going to be tight, tight and hard fight uh, at the end of the race. Well, the third, you caught a glimpse there of the third team on the road there, faces CST. Yeah, so the, again, it's boiling up to the Funtis Pass climb, which is going to be uh, a critical phase, both in the men's and women's race. The uh, beautiful uh, mountain in the uh, distance there is uh, Saronsberg, presiding over the, almost the entire stage. It's very much uh, ever-present as we uh, bring you images from stage three. It gets a little more rugged there. Look at this as they uh, head towards the steeper climbs in the corner of this beautiful valley, the Fruit Winterhook uh, Mountains beckon. So there's the split in the group in the men's race. So BMC KTM have lost a bit of time going through the uh, I mentioned later checkpoint at 71.5 kilometers. So six teams now. Buffs got MTB2. That's Vigara and Ruiz. Bulls 2 and Bulls 1. So uh, uh, Steve John and Fry as well as Urs Huber and Simon Schneller. Trek Pirelli, uh, Samuel Poro and his partner Fabian Ravenstein at 91 Songo Specialized. The race leaders Matt Beers and Jordan Saru and Canyon Northwave. Andreas Sievold and his partner Martin Sosek. Uh, we just saw the, uh, the BMC team, the BMC KTM team rejoining that group. So uh, let's see how it all plays out. I think it was my prediction that the BMC team would be be animating the stage not winning the stage i think i might be backpedaling a little bit <laughs> <laughs> bulls there four riders uh, there's the buff scott pair of bagara and uh this i'm not sure that bmc ktm are back no i think i was mistaken maybe optimistic thinking optimistically there i think what uh, mistook <laughs> them for the e-bike riders and uh, it'll be interesting to see what exactly happened. It doesn't look like the pace, the pace looks like it has increased a lot. We are on the decisive, this is the selective climb. It's the final the big obstacle of the day in terms of uh, where the selection can be made and when the, the stronger riders can make a difference. Well, we saw Matt Beer sitting right at the back towards very back of this group for a long time on that transition across the valley and now he's inside the top three or four riders with Jordan Saru as well as Andreas Sivalt and Martin Storsek and as it starts going up and it, it's going to get much steeper but look how it starts stringing out now. Yeah you can see here it's very clear that Canyon Northwave is really putting this terrain uh, to their favor pushing it super hard at the front, putting everybody else um, on the back foot. It's a good strategy here, good strategy. This is a good, strong move here. So at the back we see the Buff Scott team, um, that's Vergara and Ruiz, and uh, right back, yes, having, uh, obviously they were under a bit of pressure during the day, um, suffering with the distances, Colombo and Zanotti. Just trying to uh manage their pace and manage their efforts not to lose too much time but uh, not to get too carried away about clawing back the time here uh, this is still uh, midway through a very very hard eight days of racing for two young cross-country races so uh, it's all about seeing what their limits where their limits are understanding and managing uh, their efforts Funtis pass it is a critical phase of this day's uh, racing it's uh, the key sectors about six kilometers just over 6.2 kilometers in distance 403 meters of accumulated climbing over that so it is a significant challenge that could well determine how this uh, stage uh, is determined uh, is uh, finished in terms of the results so bart brenton's peter vessel sitting behind the basis cst team of uh, risker strauss and candace lill we are in third place at the moment They can actually see the yeah, leading that is two the lead group ahead of them. Yeah. women's team 
right in front of them, meaning that the pace at the front is not all too high at the moment. So it's going to come down really to that last climb, technical single track section. But the question is, how hard has uh, Candice Lill and Mariska Strauss been yeah. working to get back to this point? Because they have to put in extra work in comparison to, to these women. Familiar style of uh, Ariane Luti we've seen for so many years. Uh, in ninth, I think, is Peter Vessel and uh, Bart Brenchens go to the front of that little group. They're not involved in that race. That's it. They're the Grand Masters, of course. And now Buff Scott, uh, Vergara, and Ruiz have uh, dropped uh, a little bit off this group as the Fantis Pass starts to bite here. Yeah, well, this is the true test of the of the day, in fact. And, uh, we saw earlier Jordan Saru way up ahead and uh, the Canyon Northwave team staying in touch with Jordan Saru, but Matt Beers is slightly distance. You can also see Team Bulls also dropping off the pace a little bit. And uh, we look up ahead, we see Urs Huber and Simon Schneller and Stozek. Let's have a look up the road. There's the world champion. Samueli Poro, Martin Storsek up front, then it's uh, Sirvold, and uh, then it's uh, Fabian Ravensteiner and Stefan Sam. There are two other bikes in there, just a reminder, are our camera bikes on the e-bikes, the Bulls uh, e-bikes of Stefan Sam and Thomas Deitch. Uh, but they're keeping an eye, so they've split up now to keep an eye on uh, those two groups, and there are the race leaders, 91 Sango Specialized. But look at the gap, it's mm. growing, and it's still early in this uh, climb. The, the part that would suit Canyon North Wave the better, uh, towards the end of the climb, it's the steepest part, uh, will suit them better, and there I, I assume that they will open up the gap even more. So this will be very interesting to see how big of a gap can they actually yeah, gain towards the top of this climb because the overall they have only less than two minutes. Two, to two, two, thirteen, yeah. And will so. they manage to open that up that bigger gap? Absolutely, this could be key. There they are in the distance there. So Matt Beers is, well, I mean, he's an incredible rider, but if they, you know, everyone's got strengths and weaknesses, um, they're all relative. But, uh, you know, if there is a an Achilles heel, if you like, for Matt Beers, it might be these really steep climbs. It's tough for everyone, but uh, this might be an area that he that he uh, finds uh, tougher than uh, than anything else. And they may be suffering after the last yeah. two days. They won two stages out of three, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be a difficult day for them. They've uh, clearly we we have to remind ourselves that the racing has been tight up until now. It's been really just a few seconds, uh, and uh, we looked at the general classification um, at the start of the day. We uh, we had uh, 91 Songo Specialized only 2 minutes 13 ahead. So um, it's still very tight and the riders are still very evenly matched. Back to the women. Yeah, and all together here, the top three teams. Nice to see that uh, they've uh, regained contact here. The Faces CST pair of Candice Lill and Mariska Strauss now together with Salus Med and 91 Songo Specialized. So. Uh, they are preparing for the big climb. Fair tree are going well. That's Jenny Stenerhach and her partner Amy McDougall now in fourth place. Remember, Computer Mania, the big losers uh, today, unfortunately, due to a fall and time lost uh, as a consequence of that. Just uh, again, rolling through on the flats here. Yeah. Now, that time check yeah. was taken a short while ago, just before the catch that faces CST, where faces CST regained contact with Salus Med and 91 Songo Specialized. So they now are well into the 60 kilometers um, uh, of the 91 kilometer stage. They are together. The three contending teams will most likely stay together until that all selective and all important Fantis pass, the steep climb that will decide the winners of the day. On the gravel section of this farm road here, and some, uh, there's Robin Dupruit and uh, Laura Stick and others riding on the side to try and avoid the stones now left through the uh, orchards. So like the men, this race is uh, very, very likely to be determined in the uh, next 20 kilometers or so up Fantis Pass. And the longer they stay together in a big group like this, the more it pays into the favor of uh, Sina and Laura. Um, yeah, it looks like it could be similar to yesterday and some teams should try and put 
put everybody else under pressure here. But for now, it's still wide open and there's a lot of drafting going on. So riding smart, being in the, in, in the, the wind shade of the right in front of you is not a bad thing. We can see here the, the faces T, uh, CST are really taking initiative. So, Sirvold and Storsek of Canyon Northwave have gone to the front of the men's race. That's Ravenstein on his own behind there. His partner, Samueli Pora, was back with the 91 Songo Specialized. Probably around fifth last time we saw 15, 18, 20 seconds back. So this is a fascinating dynamic is unfolding here as they climb up uh, this brutally hard Fantis Pass. This is probably the hardest climb that they will have the whole week. And look how the gap has grown. It's growing bigger and bigger, and they still have a lot of climbing to do, meaning they will open up this gap even more. This is a crucial part of the entire week, the entire race, which we're watching right now, uh, because up until this point, everybody was kind of evenly matched, and now we see one team really pulling away. You've written Grand Raid. No. No, I haven't. <laughs> oh. I've heard about it. Uh, yes, <laughs> because Sirvold won that earlier this year, and he's won seven races this year, including the World Championships. And he's won, uh, I mean, that is apparently one of the uh, iconic climbs uh, in, in uh, mountain biking. And uh, so he's got the legs, he's got the, the experience, he knows how to, how to handle this climb. Sirvold certainly is the on-form rider yeah. of the year uh, when it comes to the long format racing and mountain biking. And uh, clearly confident at the beginning of the stage, and. Uh, Monica mentioned it earlier that his morale was really high and uh, Stozek uh, I think also buoyed by that enthusiasm and it's clear that this is really their terrain. They are deep into the stage race, deep into the Apsi Cape Epic and this is going to wear, going to be really where it all counts. They know they're stronger on the day, they can feel it, they can sense it and uh, they know that they've put some good time into their rivals, 91 Songo Specialized. They sense that weakness and they will absolutely capitalized. This is really where it counts. They need to make it really work here for them and gain as much time as they possibly can. Tomorrow is another day, but they will be thinking very much of today and what's in front of them and how much time they can put into 91 Songo Specialized. The, 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 the images from the uh, helicopter, of course, make it look pan flat, but uh, you just need to look at how slowly and how hard and how bent over their handlebars these riders are to get an idea of how steep this uh, terrain is. Uh, I think if you saw how fast they were going through the orchards. E exactly. If you're a statistician and you're a, a sp if you're into uh, your uh, your stats, you'd be looking at the watts, and the watts would completely be at odds with the speed, yes. um, which clearly means that this is a super steep climb. Strung out it is. Uh, that's Poro on his own trying to reconnect with uh, Ravensteiner, the Italian champion up there, the, the white figure going up there, but uh, already rounding the little hairpin at the top. Uh, the uh, Canyon Northway team. I predict they will have more than two minutes over 91 Sango Specialized at the top of this climb. Question is, how will 91 Sango Specialized be able to close that in the downhill? I mean, yeah, it is their terrain, but on the other hand, they are gonna arrive there totally cross-eyed. Yep. So there is one advantage that they'll have is that if they, if they cross, if they over the uh, top of the pass with the Bulls team, and that's both Bulls teams, they will be able to uh, at least have a, they have a similar agenda to the Bulls. They don't want to let Canyon Northwave go up the road, so there could be some cooperation with them on the flats. Um, on, in the last five kilometers, they will no doubt work together. And of course, the team up the road are alone, so they'll have to rely just on each other to set the pace. So let's see how that cooperation plays out in the chase group with both Bulls teams the Trek Pirelli team and, of course, the race leaders, 91 Songo Specialized. Right now, I think they've dropped into the uh, Asahai Boss uh, single track. And uh, this is going to be uh, critical for Andreas Sirvold and the Canyon Northwave to manage their efforts through here after really going hard up that climb. Sirvold on the front, Storsek, and then uh, our e-bike uh, camera behind them in uh, Stefan Sam. But this is the Land Rover technical terrain and uh, Asakai Bosch, a quite sublime piece of single track. It really is stunning. It's a spectacular piece of single track and huge fun. Um, and uh, even the riders who are at the white hot part of the race, this is the really this this is the selective part of the race. And no doubt they'll take maybe a little bit of time to enjoy it. 
uh, even though the pressure is on. Revan Steiner. Okay, so I'm going to pull my predictions back a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they have two minutes at the, yeah. the very uh, top of this climb. Question is still, how much are 91 Sanko Specialists willing to risk in this descent? Because that's where they have to make up time. Bulls, so where are 91 Songo Specialized? There Here they go. come. So it's uh, to their advantage that they are together. They don't have to. Um, they don't have to overtake any other riders. And being together means that they can uh, they can accelerate, or the, the front rider can accelerate, and uh, the teammate can enjoy. They're not. No teammates are going to be held up by uh, by riders along the way along the trail because overtaking on this trail is virtually impossible. Yeah, and it gets, as they go in deep into this beautiful indigenous forest, it gets, so uh, I don't think we'll be able to see the trail in there, but uh, it gets very technical at, uh, at times, rocky and rooty. So um, you don't want to make a mistake in there and uh, take the wrong line and uh, perhaps accidentally bump, bump a, a derailleur and uh, suddenly you're in, uh, in big trouble with the mechanical. So high speed, but caution uh, also required as we... Uh, I'll pick up uh, with Seerwald and Storsek. Almost come to a stop on that switchback and then back down they go. Beautiful riding, beautiful trails. Again, Dion Wilkins and his whole team uh, have done an incredible job in creating a, uh, a playground for the riders in the 2021 Apps Cape Epic to uh, really enjoy, albeit that they have to work really hard to get up to enjoy these, uh, these single tracks up the Philip Funtys Pass. But it uh, certainly looks uh, the the reward is is uh, sumptuous, really beautiful. And also just getting into the shades a bit, little bit is uh, is nice to cool the body temperature um, just a little bit after being in the exposed uh, areas with a lot of sun. Uh, it really makes a big difference that you can just cool down just for a, for a moment. Yeah, it's windless, isn't it? Those trees dead still there, so it does. They're in almost in in, in the was that corner of the bowl a bowl doesn't have a corner but in this sense it does uh, right up against the mountains so it can get really really hot in that uh, part of the valley as they pop out down here it'll be a rocky technical section for Sirvolt and Storsek of Canyon North Wave have they done enough on that attack up Fanti's Pass to hold off the yellow jerseys who perhaps well, they will be threatened now. They won't know what the what the uh, the gap is. Ravensteiner is uh, closing in quickly, and here is Samueli Poro flying down the trail. Risks going to be taken, that's for sure. Twenty nine degrees, nearly just showing me on that. Uh, it's going to be yeah. That's that's now. 29 in Tulbach. Yep, and that's 10 o'clock, so uh, it's going to be uh, very, very warm as the afternoon continues for the vast majority of these riders as they come into this part of the, the trail. Exactly, and we saw predictions uh, up to upwards of 30, 35, perhaps even higher than that, and uh, the amateurs will be uh, looking to hydrate at those water points as much as possible. They'll be loading up, they'll be taking a big drink, and they'll be loading up their bottles. And hopefully some of them will have their hydration packs as well. I think that thirsty uh, floating bridge uh, at Reflectors Guest House might be used as a, as a diving board by some of those riders some later on. Some may accidentally go over yes. the edge. <laughs> it happens. Look at the beautiful views out uh, across the land of the Waver in it. Just a truly stunning uh, part of the Western Cape. Tilbach, the oldest town in South Africa and uh, steeped in history. Some uh, magnificent buildings that have been restored after a devastating earthquake struck this area in 1969. So it looks like uh, the Trek Borelli guys have, uh, have just about to make contact with the leaders here. It seems that Trek Borelli have taken some huge risks on that fast section. And really it could be a case of just who dares wins and letting the brakes go. And the more conservative uh, Canyon Northwave team have played it safe don't want to risk anything they know how long this race is but Trek Pirelli have absolutely closed that gap down it was possibly up to 30 seconds at the top and they have shut it down so Trek Pirelli I think that was your prediction was it uh, 
I'll claim it. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> we didn't write them Not down. Not yet, anyway. They haven't won yet. Um, but uh, yeah, Seewald is clearly the four man. Now remember that uh, that Martin Stosek was not good to, wasn't slated to ride with uh, Seewald. Uh, with Christian Heinick. No, he's riding with Christian Heinick, a former winner of this Serbs uh, Cape Epic back in 2013. So 2014. Beg your pardon. Thanks, Neil. These stats coming rolling out of your your computer head, and um, it is uh, so. So it's interesting to see. You know where the, the the differential between the two, uh, but Stosek working, digging deep to stay with him. Ravensteiner on his wheel, and there is Samueli Poro. So they've done well to to make contact. Question is, will they be able to maintain this and stay clear of the chasing uh, pack, the marauding bulls? 91 Songo specialized behind them. Poro was suffering on that climb. And Ravensteiner being the stronger rider, the stronger climber. And uh, it's probably no coincidence that he's wearing that Italian national championship jersey in the marathon category. Uh, Stozek and Sievolt. Sievolt at the front in the world championship jersey. Absolutely flying at the moment. And they will perhaps be grateful for the, uh, for the trek, for the company of Trek Pirelli. And they'll be able to cooperate on those flat sections. Trek Pirelli also have an agenda here. They would love to win the stage. And of course, looking very much to the overall GC uh, when they, they finish in Valdivy, the gap. What, what gap do you, what, what would you peg that gap at? Just 30 seconds? Three? This. The gap back. So we've got Trek Pirelli up front and we've got. Uh, yeah, to, to them, probably about 30. 30 seconds. 30 to 30. Maximum one minute. Maximum a minute, but yeah. yeah. It's, it, it looked as they panned back there, it looked as though it was yawning out. You thought maybe that's too, but getting around mm. this corner now, probably about, yeah, maybe 40. But, uh, so yeah. tactically, the Bulls will need to make a call now because if they were to race really cleverly and perhaps to, uh, to look to do the dirty on, uh, on Team Songo, uh, 91 Songo Specialized, they will leave it, abs they should leave it absolutely up to the team in yellow to chase and uh, capitalize on that by sitting on their wheels, enjoying their slipstream. And uh, the, uh, the other side of the coin is that uh, the Bulls may not want to relinquish their podium spot and watching Drake Pirelli disappear up the road puts their third spot, puts their podium place in under threat. So it could be interesting to see how the Bulls play this tactically as to whether they're going to cooperate with 91 Songo Specialized. Pass through Destair Farm and they're on Vinterhook Farm, this steep uh, trail dropping off uh, the valley now, back into the orchard, showing that they are off the side of the mountain. We've got a 44 second gap, that gap there pegged. Be very interesting, it looks like Jordan Saru is setting the pace. He is taking up the lion's share of the work, knowing what they are losing. 44 seconds is, uh, is still a small proportion of the 2 minutes 17 lead they have on overall GC at the start of the stage. The yellow jerseys do not look under complete threat right now, but uh, they know that it's not just the seconds, it's also the dominance of the team up ahead, the fact that they are looking stronger in the day. And uh, this, we've got, uh, still got stage four, five, six, seven, and eight to go. And if this continues in the same pattern, they're going to be in trouble. You, you've written, obviously, in the race leader's jersey for much of your Absa Cape Epic career, Annika. But I mean, when, you, when this sort of situation happens as the race leader, I would, I don't know, I would speculate that it, if it's 44 seconds, it, it feels like 44 minutes because you just don't know. You, you can't see know. where they are. No. And, and, and so, so managing that, uh, I say panic, but, but anxiety, is yeah. there an anxiety? For sure there is. Um, when you have a team ahead of you and you're not, you're not capable of getting a glimpse of them um, then you start wondering, um, are they just going to pull away? Are they just all of a sudden they have superhuman powers and can like pull away? They like nothing. So it's it's uh, for the head mentally to stay calm is is very important. And if you don't see the teams ahead of you, you have no idea how far ahead they are, and it's uh, challenging and um, something you need to, to to learn to deal with. And often you think it's way worse than it is. Yes, yes. I would, I would, I would think that yeah, mm. would be the case. Uh, 44 minutes, probably every 10 seconds seems like a minute for them. And, uh, it, does, it does. They don't know the extent of it. This is uh, on the back 
of that lead group, uh, Samueli Poro. Again, a close look at the rough, uh, uncompromising terrain. Just looking at his body language, he looks like he's suffering. And he's quite comfortable just staying on the back and hope, just hoping to stay in touch with those front riders and hoping to capitalize on the ambitions of Team Canyon Northwave. Unfortunately, we've lost signal up uh, on the mountain there. So as soon as we uh, can, we'll bring you back uh, into the action. But I think you'll appreciate it. It is difficult. We are in some fairly remote areas, but it is wonderful to see, nonetheless, the uh, excitement of that climb up to the uh, top of Fanti's Pass and then the descent. Brilliant. We've just been getting some time checks in and at the water point three, which is at the 72 kilometer mark, just before the steep section of Fantis Pass. We have a time check. They have not reached the next time check at 82 kilometers. We'll keep an eye on that timing, Matt. And uh, at the 72 kilometer mark, we had the top six teams. Uh, of course, we saw Canyon North Wave and 91 Zonga Specialized, Trek Burley, Bulls, both very Bulls teams. Maybe now is a good point because it's open and field. from Stefan. Yeah, let's say, yeah, this is a good point. I think, Stefan, we just got uh, our producers connecting with him. Stefan, can you hear us? In the open now, so signal should be good. Yeah, tell us, Stefan, uh, what's the dynamic in that group? What, what are they all looking like? Right, at the moment, Trek Pirelli is hanging on for dear life uh, on, on Seewalds and uh, Stosek's wheel. I think somewhere Le Poro is uh, he's really strong. I think really hot now. But it seems like uh, Trek Pirelli can still keep up the pace. They're quicker in the downhills because they closed the gap on the like on the <laughs> cool thing strike forest. And, and the, the the chase group, uh, from what we can see up ahead, is uh, actually starting to close the gap. It seems uh, slowly but surely. Yeah, if I look back. Which backs down, and obviously now that they can see the chair, the lead group gives them more motivation to catch up. And Jordan is pulling, yeah, uh, is pulling the whole group to get back again. Well, fascinating dynamics. That terrain looks, those look very new trails there, uh, Stefan. It's, yeah, it's fresh cut and it's, uh, it's really amazing to ride. The trail in the forest was just something else. One of the best trails I've ever ridden. Give, give us a quick perspective on the Fanti's climb. How tough would that have been for them? Oh, that was um, incredible. Like it's just goes up into the sky. <laughs> it's no <laughs> stairway to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're dropping down a stairway to heaven now because that uh, single track, uh, you, you look as like you're dropping into something nice. But we are watching the images now. We're on the single track with you. Uh, we were briefly and now we're gone. Unfortunately, we've been watching these uh, pairs. So, it does look as though it might be them slowly but surely clawing back some of that uh, that time. Well, I was just doing a very informal time check, and uh, it's gone down to about 35, 40 seconds or so. Uh, just picking, I uh, just picked a push and uh, took the last rider in the front group, uh, which of course, as we saw, was Samuel Poro and Jordan Saru at the front. It was around about 35 or so seconds at uh, my informal time check. But uh, as the trail opens out, as the speed goes up, the, uh, the actual gap in terms of distance increases. So it's quite deceptive. And of course, the riders uh, always look to time, not to distance. Although, as we've said many times before, the team that can see another team up the road, they have that advantage. They know that uh, they are close and that the, the gap is under control and don't have that panic feeling that uh, the team up the road, the teams up the road are disappearing and have this, uh, I think I referred to the superhuman strength. The mind can play tricks on the riders. And just having that, uh, that front group in sight will be a great relief for 91 Songo Specialized. That's the world marathon champion, Andreas Seerwald, the title he won uh, just uh, two and a half weeks ago in Italy on a brutally hard course. Behind him is Martin Storsek, his uh, Canyon Northway teammate. And then it's Fabian Rappensteiner and uh, Samueli Poro of Trek Pirelli. Stefan referred to it, you referred to it, Anik has referred to it, but Samueli Poro is, is, is the one man who's really 
trying to hang on here. How's that partnership now working? They're with the leaders. Ravenstein is feeling pretty good. He's climbed well instead. And his partner's struggling a little. How, what, what's going on there? It's very important for the stronger in the team to stay calm and help your partners as much as possible. For me, it was always very important if I, in a, in a partnership, felt stronger that I got my teammate up front. You don't want a suffering teammate on your wheel. You want uh, him or her in front of you. Uh, so you don't put that person on the limit, but maybe these I don't know if these guys work differently But for the morale being the weaker rider being the last one in this group and just barely hanging on with the tip of your nails is mentally it's, it, it can break you so I always preferred the strategy to to put the weaker rider in a comfortable uh, position. Yeah it is interesting as well because <laughs> not only that um, you know, this is a we, we're surmising from what we're seeing from here, and Stefan is riding right behind them. And uh, perhaps Samuel Iporo has heard him say, "Well, we're wondering. I was wondering how good his English is. <laughs> if you can, if you can hear Stefan commentating on it, and if it's uh, if it does affect him." Well, I think in this particular situation, they, they might be lucky they have the, the, the chopper uh, just above their head. It actually oh, makes uh, hearing difficult sometimes. <laughs> and I can hear the chopper a little bit. So maybe he has a feeling that, uh, Stefan, when he speaks, that the riders actually can't hear him because the chopper is that loud. Mm, just pause to uh, admire yeah. these trails. Yes, you can hear me, Gerald. We can, Stefan. Go, talk. Okay. How far are yeah, they that's in? That's exactly the point. No, it's exactly the point. Thing the right can't really hear me. Also, I mean, I must respect the rest, and I wouldn't tell anything to kill the morale of any rider. Absolutely. No, absolutely, absolutely. They've just crossed one of uh, 50 purpose-built bridges on today's trail. And that, again, another e example, an illustration of how much commitment has gone into to building these trails. As Team Bulls try and uh, maintain their integrity in this group with four riders. And uh, 91 Songo Specialized are the... Uh, Group on the front here, that, that, group, that gap is definitely closing in. Uh, Jordan Saru is doing some great work on the front there. Exactly, and those are, that's a group of three teams. We've got two Bulls teams, uh, which are very evenly matched and ominous, ominously well matched and ominously well poised in the stage. They've also got the advantage of the yellow jerseys have to chase to defend their overall lead, and the Bulls can sit tight in their slipstream. They may wish to cooperate at some point because they don't want to see Trek Pirelli going too far up the road. But so far right now, it is very much up to 91 Songo Specialized to chase and to close that gap. They're coming down the bottom of the hill, Andreas Sivolt is a part of Martin Storsek and the Trek Pirelli pair. Race leaders descending out of uh, the mountains on stage three of the 2021 Absa Cape Epic and going. Once they get to the flat part after this descent, I predict that Canyon North Wave, they will have to do all the work by themselves. Uh, it's clear that the Trek Pirelli are, diff are clearly suffering in their wheels. They are not going to be able to, to take initiative and, and take the front on the flat. Oh, the gap really is closing there. Comes uh, Saru and Beers and the two Bulls teams in hot pursuit. Just like we saw in the previous days that the top, the top teams in terms of firepower, in terms of physicality, have revealed themselves. And uh, the Bulls are very much up there. Uh, both Bulls teams, 91 Songo Specialized, of course, just seem to, up until today, have the edge. And Canyon North Wave absolutely uh, today is certainly the best looking team in terms of physicality in terms of output and trek pirelli seeming to be able to uh, match them at least cert well, certainly on the downhills they must have taken some big risks to get back in touch because that gap was uh, we could call it 20 seconds and to close those gaps on those trails with a marauding team up front means that they would have gone right to their limits on that descent and buff scott are coming back into it as well vergara and nudis are Oh, uh, closing the gap here. So uh, 
uh, it really is uh, becoming Rui's big partner are, are going to be uh, in the mix here perhaps as well there's the lead as they pass through the uh, last hydration station and uh, that'll be an indication that the rest of this ride really is going to be flat out downhill it's going to be very very fast and uh, they'll be absolutely hammering it 82 k's in it is that uh, hydration station and we've got uh, less than nine kilometers left now and we'll have just seen the time check with its canyon north wave and trek pearly together riding and they'll be cooperating we've seen them in 91 songa specialized together with the bulls teams one and two are 26 seconds back it's going to be a high paced uh, conclusion to uh, this stage three at uh, the 2021 apps at cape epic it's been a fascinating battle in the early uh, Shots weren't really fired. They kept their powder dry as they went through the bone trail and three gorges and across back across the valley floor after the dimension data hotspot had been won by the South African Piga Eurosteel team. That was uh, at 21 kilometers. And uh, then it was a truce. And now the uh, gloves are off. They truly are. And 26 seconds is not a lot, especially since the leading four riders, leading two teams. Uh, I think they only have one team to do all the work because Trek Pirelli looks like they are so on the limit that they aren't capable of going to the front, whereas the chasers behind them, 26 seconds behind them, have more teams that I predict will be willing to take turns at the front. This is extreme riding. This is so, so fast down here. see that the trail surfaces are littered with small rocks and uh, normally you would think that this is not a necessarily a section that's rated as a highly dangerous section or something to really uh, be concerned about but we've said it already that there are very often the most random small obstacle can create absolute havoc with a tire or a drivetrain or uh, or anything like that can, a rock, piece of rock can fly up and hit a chain ring sometimes the most random incidents can uh, can really take minutes and even hours off uh, off your gc hopes right that's a virtual leaderboard no science no no really we can't tell you that this is exact but a minute and 48 uh, would be uh, the lead for 91 Songo specialized if the race were to stop now there and they're about a minute and 48 and the bulls are 408 down so uh, they would have lost a couple of seconds but the uh, canyon north wave would be gaining here very very definitely they start the day two minutes and 13 seconds uh, behind so the estimate is around 25 second gap at this stage on the on the road down there so and just bearing in mind on uh, stage two at the end of stage two yesterday trek pirelli were 10 minutes down on general classification so they were in sixth spot in fact, they were in six spot behind Team Buff Scott. That's Hans Becking and Jose Diaz. Jose Diaz and Hans Becking having had a terrible day with a cha broken chain today. They look like they'll be out of contention. Trek Pirelli most likely will move up to at least to fifth spot on overall GC. But they're looking to take time out of the Bulls teams. And, um, of course, 91 Zongo specialized as their campaign for the, for the end of the week for the grand finale in Valdivia Estate. They'll be looking to get to that podium at least the third step and hopefully going even better up to the top step. Trek really always do better. They seem to they seem to improve throughout the race and uh, their performance today is uh, an indication of exactly that. Hammering along this uh, farm road in pursuit of the leaders. No more than perhaps 20 seconds at this stage ahead. Uh, Canyon Northwave and Trek Pirelli as 91 Songo specialized and a pair of Bulls teams try and claw their way back. You can see that looks like Simon Stiebjan at the back uh, struggling a little bit with the pace set by the 91 Songo specialized the riders who are absolutely on a mission to close this gap right to uh, Martin Stozek and Andreas Siebold and uh, the first time we see Trek Pirelli con contributing They've got a lot to gain from this from this gap, putting time into the Bulls. And it uh, looks like 91 Songo Specialized are not getting much help from the Bulls team. Yeah, this is a ideal um, break, if you like, for, for the front of the race. Both these uh, are chasing advantage over different teams. So they, 
they really are working uh, terrifically here. Stosek hands over to Sirvold. Trek Pirelli in the mix as well. So a look behind them while there's dust and uh, they'll notice that there's a cloud of dust not too far behind them and that's the chase group which is uh, down below now led by Matt Beers so he's finding some comfort uh, yeah. in his uh, at this point of the stage uh, the flatter part where he can really let those uh, let his engine do the work he has so much power in the flats and uh, they don't want to let kind of north wave get too too big of a gap that's for sure yeah the cloud of uh, dust will be their their marker they'll know they're close they won't uh, they'll be aware mm -hmm. that they've been keeping a good pace and uh, there we see the decisive moment where the bulls are actually going to give the lending they're going to lend a hand and urs huber absolutely powering away at the front this will be a decisive moment in the gap being closed they get do get some help from the bulls urs huber a very powerful rider having won the race before in 2016 and, uh, this will put some time back into the Canyon Northwave team and Trek Pirelli up the road. A drag race towards the finish of this uh, stage three. It's riveting stuff as the general classification is uh, one of those uh, factors here. Of course, the stage win is another, but it's not just the overall, uh, the top of the general classification. It's Trek Pirelli trying to claw their way back into uh, contention. It's Bulls trying to defend their position it's canyon north wave trying to make up ground on the uh, yellow jerseys it's all to play for here fantastic racing Storsik, ravensteiner and then it's uh, sirvold and uh, poro who has uh, observed by uh, stefan sam hanging on for all he's worth at the end here ferocious pace through these uh, farm it's flat and fast it is Looks like they're the ones on e-bikes as well. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely flying. Stefan, I don't know if you can hear us. I don't think he can, unfortunately. I have an idea of what sort of speed these uh, guys are going at. Really is high pace. Poro has put in an enormous effort today. His uh, partner was strong on the climb and Poro was in that group and he slowly clawed his way back into contention then dropped down like a stone down the uh, Asgharkos uh, Land Rover uh, technical terrain. Big credit to Poro, he's uh, saved the day for the Trek Pirelli team. Uh, it's always difficult for the uh, slightly weaker rider. He's uh, not necessarily uh, always the weaker rider in the partnership. It might just be on the day, the legs and uh, even the season's form. We do see uh, Ravensteiner, he is wearing the national championships jersey, a jersey that uh, Samuel Pora will have competed for as well. And, uh, credit to him for, uh, for the mental strength just to keep, keep, hanging, uh, keep hanging in there. And he will use every trick in the book to save as much energy as possible. So if they do have a sprint finish, if it is a sprint finish between these two teams, everyone wants to win a stage and uh, he will save something so that he has a little, just a little bit extra because he knows exactly how much energy uh, Andreas Sievold and Martin Stozak have been spending to get that gap back, get, to extend that gap back to 91 Songo Specialized. It's one advantage of a team that's uh, slightly down on GC. Trek really are sixth on overall general classification and they know full well that uh, Canyon Northwave will have their agenda cut out for them today. They'll take advantage of that fact and that uh, the Canyon Northway will just put in a little bit of extra effort to keep that gap as wide as possible. Well, a week after winning the World Championships, which is the first weekend of, of October, Andreas Sevold went to the Rock d'Azur, which is a, a tough event. Uh, I, I, I that, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would have yeah. He won that. Second place, Fabian Ravensteiner. So, uh, there's clearly these are two of the, the, the most informed riders at the moment on uh, the uh, marathon circuit. Oro, of course, uh, recovering from a broken arm at Swiss Epic. Um, so he's getting back to his his uh, full strength. He was eighth at uh, Rock d'Azur. So uh, these men are at the peak of their powers at this stage of the year. Well, he needs to be careful at the moment because uh, obviously he's recovering from that uh, from that um, that broken arm. 
and he needs to make sure he doesn't go too far into the red. He knows that if he does keep his uh, his energy levels up and his morale up, he will he will get we say get better during the race. His uh, he will decline less. His form will will improve. So uh, looks really good for Trek Pirelli at the moment. He was eighth at the World Champs, Sporo, finishing that course as we've we've discussed earlier. Is a, is a, it was tough as it for anyone, but uh, to be inside the top ten shows that. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much uh, back. Trek Pirelli team are always a big factor at the race, and uh, especially deep into the race as we go into the final four stages from tomorrow. We, we pass the more or less the halfway point, and uh, things get very ex will get very exciting towards the uh, the latter half. Rabensteiner takes it on in front. Stosik, Sivold, and uh, Poro behind. Three k's to go. So we're in for another enthralling finish here. Will the chase group catch them as they close in towards Saronsburg? And it's uh, it's not like a, a road race where the you know what the surface is going to do. This is uh, so unpredictable. And going at the express speed they're going now, uh, you can it's it's high risk. It is, especially now at this point, the fatigue is really starting to set in and. Uh, Sometimes it really can affect your focus a little bit. Of course, these are really high, highly skilled riders with the experience uh, of doing this and, and this feeling of being tired and still having to stay focused. But it is a factor, and we do see sometimes people crashing in weird places where they think, "What is going on?" And simply just, you know, the, the accumulation of uh, fatigue. And here we see at this corner, there's a foot out, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean. He and this is a course, you know, with, with a road race, you know where you're going, there's the road. And uh, whereas uh, yeah, you, you think you're going on this nice fast farm road and that the, the course hooks to the right into a single track, just like this. So mm. um, your momentum is uh, s stopped and you have to start all over again. The same will happen with this group, though. You see, there oh. we go. They go past one rider, heads past one of the bulls riders, I think heads past the, uh, the turn. At this point, everybody's going so fast, and you really have to make sure that you, you spot all the signs on the course. I myself, speaking from experience, having had a furious fast finish, and all of a sudden, I'm, I missed a turn, and it has consequences. Yeah, absolutely. It really, really has. So, it's going to be... Uh, this group may well catch them. Well, what we do know is that there'll be absolutely no letting up in the pace in both groups. There'll be no flat section where everyone regroups, takes a drink. It's going to be full, full, full gas right the way to the finish. And any rider caught by a mistake like that is going to be really suffering. They're going to have to spend a lot of energy getting back and uh, use every trick in the book. We saw from earlier scenes when there is a corner, Simon Stibjohn was breaking super late into the corner and using that concertina effect to his full advantage. And uh, any rider caught with a gap will be using those similar tactics. It is a tactic that's easier to employ when there is a big bunch, but considering that the chasing bunch is only three teams, that's two Bulls teams and 91 Songa Specialized, doesn't give much opportunity for any rest or any opportunity to, uh, to catch up if there are any gaps developing in that group. Well, uh, Stefan uh, Sam has uh, communicated through our uh, producer that hitting 37 kilometers an hour. And uh, that is just uh, phenomenal speeds. As, uh, this group will have uh, seen the uh, lead group across the other side, but uh, perhaps there's a little bit of a, a lull here. I know they, they're emptying the tanks, but uh, they've perhaps just gone too deep. As well, the uh, Trek Pirelli uh, team here looking to try and get themselves into position to take a, a stage win here. That would be a byproduct, I fancy, of, of their efforts today. They'd love to have it, but most importantly for them is uh, the time made up on uh, Team Bulls uh, on the overall, and of course here for Canyon Northwave, they'll take it to take any time they can get. Two minutes and 13 at the start of the day. The race village is in the distance there. You can see the white marquees. So this lead group of four riders, Trek Pirelli and Canyon Northwave, are right into the last kilometer here. There it is. The race village awaits them at Saronsburg. So now a thrilling finish in prospect on a brutally hard day that uh, was decided in some ways around that uh, Fantis Pass climb. 
where the uh, Canyon Northwave team were able to put uh, time into their rivals. Interesting to see that uh, Ravenstein has really been doing his fair share of the work. In fact, uh, probably the lion's share of the work in Stozek also having putting in some big efforts. It's unclear to us right now who the stronger partner is out of the Canyon North. They look very well matched as we see Andreas Seabolt going to the front, just making sure the sense is the pace is dropping just a little bit as, as Ravensteiner's efforts are uh, fading, having spent some time at the front. And uh, looks like they're going to they know full well, yes. It's the, Andreas yep. Stevold knows exactly. He learned from the yep. stage going uh, from stage one in the sprint finish that the best tactic he can employ is to go out front. That would leave it up to Martin Stozek to win the sprint. All he has to do, Martin Stozek just has to beat Samuel Poro in the sprint, knowing how much Samuel Poro has been suffering. He's been putting on the power, yes. And, and the stage win looks like, yes, there we go. There we go. Fantastic stage North win. Well-deserved stage win for uh, Team Canyon Northwave. Absolutely brilliant riding by both these teams. Canyon Northwave take their first stage win at the uh, Absa Cape Epic as uh, Andrea Sevolt, the world marathon champion, and Martin Storsek celebrate a masterclass today to take the win. And uh, in second place, Trek Corelli and the charge for the uh, third place on the podium the bulls will take that and uh, the 91 songo specialized team will they did well to hang on to the bulls there and limit their losses to the uh, stage winners and second on gc stosek and uh, Sirvold. So what a fantastic way to finish the day for ca the canyon pair really really uh, terrific effort up the climb that set it up for them and they brought it home with a very clever piece of work by Andreas Sirvold just going out early and Stosik holding up the other two and a great recovery from the Buff Scott MTB pair whose uh, premier team had a broken chain today but uh, Vergara and Rui is managing to hang on and uh, come home and uh, that is the effort that has uh, been made by the uh, riders here. Jordan Saru absolutely emptied. Oof, that's the first time that we see him under such pressure. He's been looking so in control and so composed. Just shows how tough today's stage was. Everybody looks looks absolutely broken. I hope people will recover for tomorrow. Uh, Jordan Saru really looks like he's he's broken too. Absolutely <laughs> empty. Yeah, what a thrilling stage for the fans out there. Yeah, Obviously, I mean, we've seen the, the devastation of the riders, but uh, the fans have been treated to probably one of the most exciting stages we've seen at the Absa Cape Epic, and it was uh, thrilling stuff knowing what's at stake. The yellow jersey wearers actually managing to hold on to that lead. They did lose 28 seconds today to Canyon Northwave, but uh, they still have some time in, in the bank. And they will retain those jerseys. Any doubts about how tough this event is? There's the 2020 cross country world champion flatten his back the marathon world champion of this year flatten his back uh, these uh, men have emptied their tanks and put on a show today that really is uh, worthy of the standing of this uh, absolute cape epic is the premier mountain bike stage race as canyon northwave take the win by a couple of seconds from tech trek pirelli bulls one insect in uh, third place that's schneller and uh, Usuba, and then uh, it is Simon Stibjan and his partner Martin Fry. 30 seconds. Uh, the 91 Songo Specialized team have lost on the general classification, so the lead dips below two minutes quite significantly. Buff Scott, the MTB2, what a day for them because they've dug so deep to pull back less than a minute behind Canyon Northwave. Six teams under a minute between them on a brutally hard 91 kilometer stage with 2,100 meters of climbing. This is high quality racing. Right, drama. Let's hear from them. They're fresh off the bikes. Liesel has got the riders down there in uh, the interview zone. Just got them straight off the bikes uh, as they're catching their breath. Guys, Tell me what happened out there. We knew that that climb was going to be to your advantage when we spoke early this morning. Right. Uh, it was like our, our plan for the day worked completely fine. Uh, we could control it in this long single trail section from the front. Take it easy because yeah, we don't know it. And yeah, then in this steep climb, we attacked. 
he was brutal hard. I almost did not believe we can get a nice gap, but then there, there was the gap and towards the finish, I well, luckily we had one team with us, so we could work good together and, and push like really full gas and and hold it to the finish. And, yeah. The team was quite close on the back of your heels or on your wheels, should I say. Did that just give you that extra push that you needed to get through to the end? Yeah, luckily the Italian uh, guys uh, like work with us and help us in the in the in the finish part before the before the finish. Yeah, and in the end I was a bit confident that we can do it in the sprint because I know that Andy has a good had a good legs today. He almost like killed me in the in the, in the climb. But yeah, the, the gap was not that big after the climb because it was not too long. And then we had to work hard in these single trails, like not down, not up, just these like pedaling sections. Yeah, and when we came here, we just uh, focusing for the finish. And I'm super happy that we did our first stage win in the Cape Epic. Uh, in our first start here. So well, well done on your first stage. And there we have it from the team from Canyon North Wave. Well done, guys. Thank you. Yeah, exhausted riders now. Martin Stolsek on the left there and uh, Andrea Sivel talking to Lisa for the best taste. And there is confirmation of the general classification. One minute and 43. The race is on midway through the uh, 2021 APSA Cape Epic. Fascinating. Less than four minutes down to. Uber, the 2016 winner with uh, Simon Schneller. Then Fry and Steve Judd, the second of the Bulls team. Poron Ravensteiner are making their way back into a contention here. Vigada and Ruiz enjoyed a fantastic day today. And uh, they are now the uh, leading Buff Scott team after the troubles of Becking and uh, Diaz and Colombo and Zanotti. The BMC KTM pair, 31 minutes uh, down at the moment. Let's go back down to Liesel. With Team Bulls, team, tell us about the stage today. Yeah, it was a really hard stage and uh, already uh, really hot today. Um, we expect that the Kenyan team would be uh, attacking the last uh, long and steep, steep climb, and so it comes. And uh, yeah, there we just concentrate uh, to ourselves. And uh, on the top, we were together with the specialized team, and that was. Um, a good situation because we knew uh, they would go full gas to the finish because they had to defend the yellow jersey and so it comes and uh, I think in the end we could uh, catch back a bit of time and uh, yeah, we are we are happy about today, another stage on the podium and uh, still third in the overall. Well congratulations and those single tracks brand new, did you enjoy it out there? Yeah, they were really great. Uh, we had a lot of fun today, <laughs> um, also due to the hot conditions. It was really funny and yeah, I loved the Cape Epic. <laughs> well done, guys. Uh, really nice to see you guys on the podium again and good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, Team Bulls, as we go now to uh, Fanti's Pass and the women's race. Three hours and 46 minutes into that and uh, Sina Fry and Laura Stigger are up ahead by not a lot, but uh, Ariane Luti just behind now, losing about uh, 10 meters or so behind uh, Stiger and Fry as uh, the car start to take uh, hold on the women's race. This is where the men's race was determined, and uh, Robin de Cruyff is uh, some way off. There is uh, Robin. I'm surprised to see this. It actually looks like Robin de Cruyff is, is really suffering right now. And Ariane is trying to go with the two leading uh, women. Um, I'm not sure if Robin can, can catch up with this bigger gap. And at some point, Ariane will need to slow down and make sure she's with her partner because she don't want to go into the downhill alone. That's not a good situation to be in because then you have absolutely no control over where your partner is, uh, if she's having any mechanical issues, or so on and so on. So Ariane should look over her shoulder and make sure she brings uh, the entire team to the top. And, and, and you can see here the 91 Sango Specialized are putting down the hammer, really setting a nice pace up this climb, slowly opening a gap and, and pulling away. And we just saw uh, Sina letting Laura go to the front, uh, letting Laura uh, set the pace here. This is a serious situation for the Salus Med team because Robin really is... Uh, struggling on this climb and uh, Ariane somewhere ahead of her so uh, mm. they've got to manage this situation very carefully 
Yeah, she has to really make sure that uh, she doesn't open up too big a gap uh, on her partner. It's, uh, it can be very demoralizing for Robin de Groot just to see her, her partner uh, pulling away. Mm. Uh, and, and sometimes you, it can make you go even slower, uh, feeling that your partner is, is uh, faster than you and, and not waiting for you. So, dangerous situation. You should be careful. Peter de Troy and uh, Philip Bass, the uh, South African jersey leaders for Paga Eurostil and Interesting that that is Gertens Matthijs Björkes of Pagi Eurostil have clearly not uh, ridden today or withdrew in the stage. It's uh, disappointing for the Pagi Eurostil team. So they've uh, had a uh, withdrawal. Uh, we did uh, wonder, Matthijs Björkes was not quite on the sort of pace that we expected him to be on as a man who'd finished 20th at the World Championships and had been in such a strong form early in the year. So. Uh, perhaps there were issues, underlying issues uh, for Matthijs, but nevertheless, uh, one team left, and they are the Apps Africa Jersey leaders, so P Bass and Birkus. also took the Dimension Data hotspot on Church Street in Tilbach today. Candice Lill and Mariska Strauss on to uh, Fontys. Now they were 43 seconds back at the last time check. So uh, they've, they've worked really hard. They've had a, another uh, day with incident with that early crash when they were involved in the uh, crash that saw computer mania lose uh, buckets of time. And uh, so they are managing that. They were 43 seconds back. So yeah, they'll be uh, looking to try and claw some time back on uh, the Salisbury team. That 43 second gap was uh, just before the really steep section where you see them now. And uh, there was 43 seconds to the Salisbury team who were at that point together with Team Songa Specialized. We've seen uh, Robin de Groot drifting back uh, seem to be suffering with the steep incline, and so faces CST. If they can keep a good rhythm and keep a, and keep uh, keep their their morale up, they've got every chance that they could catch up with uh, Robin de Groot, and of course Ariane Luti having to being obliged to drop back to her teammate. She cannot let more than a two-minute gap develop between the two of them. Uh, that's what the rules state. That there is not allowed to be separated by more than two minutes, and. Uh, we're looking up to uh, see if they can close that gap to Robin de Groot with the all South African team that faces CST. The, the interesting question here is also if uh, 91 Sanko Specialized is aware that they have forced uh, Salosmet to open up a gap between each other, if they realize that they can use it to their advantage and even push the pace a little bit harder for a short period of, of time, of course, if they're capable to. Um, because that will force Ariane really to slow down. Right, tactics unfolding up the mountain on Fonti's Pass. Meanwhile, at the finish, Liesel is speaking to some of the riders who have just finished. Ready? Pre record? Um, no, you can leave. Well, we just see insect science come across the line just ahead of the young uh, riders from uh, Team Type Dev Nano Time. And uh, that's some great racing from Tristan uh, Nokia and Vessel Buerta. I think just ahead of them are Anna de Troy and Keegan Bontekunen from Insect Science. So a uh, nice inter South African rivalry there because they're racing for the Apps African jersey, of course. And then a place on that uh, podium is, is, is beckoning because now. Uh, Pago Eurostil are out of the reckoning in terms of Birkus and Haynes, so uh, they can move up the standings. Let's go back to Liesel. With Matthijs from Team Pago Eurostil, how was today's route? I only saw uh, 45 k's of it, um, Yeah, which is unfortunate. It would have been a really nice route today. and. Also a lot of cool stuff still to come for the rest of the week, but yeah, I had to pull the plug um, of that. I could see the lower back just seizes up and there's really no point in going if uh, you can start feeling nerve damage um, is taking place. And uh, yeah, so we pulled the plug at around about a 45k mark. And mentally to make that decision must have been a tough one to go through that because you're going through 45 Ks, you're feeling it and you, you're trying to make that decision mentally and still concentrate on the kilometers in front of you. 
Yeah, it's um, you got to you know weigh up your options and uh, compare the, the positives with the negatives. And for us in this case, um, you know those that know me know that I absolutely hate not being able to do my best, and I really hate giving up even more. But yeah, it's I, actually, I have no other choice. Uh, it's either that or you know I can make some damage that's going to take six months to repair. So. It's actually, uh, yeah, I don't want to say it's an easy decision to make, but uh, winners know when to quit, as I say. I love that saying, winners know when to quit. Well done on doing the 45 kilometers, and we look forward to seeing you again on the start line next year. Yeah, for sure. We we'll live to fight another day. You live to fight another day. Thanks. Well, it's sad. Jammer for Oomgert. And I'll see uh, Matthijs cannot race anymore today or uh, the remainder of the Absa Cape Epic. However, here we are with the women's uh, leaders on the Asagai Bors land over technical terrain. And this could be fascinating watching them go down here. Yeah, and now we can see they have created the gap that they most likely were aiming to gain in this section. Uh, they are out front alone. We don't see Arian or Team Salasmet or any other team nearby. Um, so the inter interesting question will be how big a gap will they be able to open up? Can they extend their lead uh, today and on GC even more? And also w what's going on behind? Will Team Faces CST be able to catch up with Salusmet or how is that going to play out? Going into the day with uh, in the women's section, 91 Songa specialized had 7 minutes 32 on Team Salismid and Team Faces CSD 18 minutes back. So all to play for, adding extra time. Looks like Team Songo Specialized are certainly the dominant team of the 2021 Absa Cape Epic. They just seem to have just that little bit extra, in fact, quite a lot extra mm. over Team Salismid. And the race is developing and uh, Team Faces CST will look to, perhaps with the, their 18 minute deficit they'll look to go one better a bit by bit to overtake Salas Med so they obviously be able to spot some weakness with uh, team Salas Med they've seen that uh, Ariel Nuti was uh, struggling yesterday and today is Robin de Kruert and perhaps uh, just uh, looking to capitalize on that weakness and no doubt on that descent they will look to close that gap back to Robin de Kruert, Candice Lill and Mariska Strauss are cross country races they are used to the knife edge super fast descents and uh, Robin de Kruert being a pure marathoner might not have might not want to take the risks that are necessary to hold off the team faces CSD Jordan that finish line collapsing had us all worried how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling so exhausted now, but it was a hard one. Uh, yeah, the climb, the, the the last climb was really hard in the in the heat, and uh, it was really steep. But we managed to to take the gap not so uh, not so bad. But yeah, uh, 30 30 seconds, uh, so it's not too bad. But yeah, still uh, some uh, some uh, stages to go. But yeah, uh, we rode uh, as we could and uh, yeah, happy about today. And working with Team Bulls near the end there on that climb? Uh, in the climb, uh, we were, uh, I, I was in the front of the, our group. Uh, but uh, after they, uh, they helped uh, us at the, on the flat uh, to get the, to the finish line. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks to, to us. Matt, how are you feeling right now? Yeah, that was hard. It was a super hard stage. I knew this would be a really, really hard one. Um, just with the heat and obviously I've, I've ridden that climb. So, yeah, it was actually after the climb that was even worse along the along the mountain. Um, but yeah, we, we hung on and we rode really well. And um, we only lost 30 seconds. So it's a yeah, brilliant ride from Jordan and um, I think we worked really well. Uh, saw that teamwork going well there. Well done to both of you. Good luck tomorrow. <laughs> you just need to look at their faces to see how tough today was. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I, I know this feeling way too well. Just looking at Jordan's <laughs> faces, just like whenever he could, he was just zoning out completely. Recovery really starts now. 
uh, as, and as soon as you can uh, get off your bike and start recovering, you, your, your, your whole system just goes into recovery mode and you just become a little bit like a zombie. Uh, that's kind of how I often felt during these races, as, as especially once we got towards the, the middle of the race uh, and the middle of the week and towards the end of the, the week. You just feel like a zombie. I mean, you don't take in many uh, impressions from what's going on around you. You just focus on the bare necessities, uh, getting ready for to ride, ride throughout the stage and then everything else. And of course, feed a lot during the stage and af after. But other than that, you're just a zombie walking around, not really doing much. And yeah, it's a phenomenon that even the amateurs are talking about: is that tunnel, that tunnel effect, uh, as your world narrows into just the basics, and uh, almost living just day yep. to day, and hour to hour, and um, living from uh, according to your schedule. And uh, in fact, for many of the amateurs, they they really enjoy that. They enjoy the the fact that all of the noise disappears, and they all they really have to concern themselves is the trail in front and um, the daily routine afterwards of recovering and uh, reach the get back to the office on the Monday morning um, having had a bit of a brain break from uh, from the everyday life podium time uh, in the men's race and uh, it is uh, going to be a new team uh, on the top step of the podium yeah, sleep eat ride recover where does that fit in that's, That's true. And the uh, question from one of our uh, viewers is like, how important is massage after the stage? And it is important. It's nice to get the legs uh, flushed, just to get some some blood flow going through the legs once you you finish the race. But for me, also mentally, just to get that time yeah. to just relax. So uh, this is the uh, podium presentation on uh, what is a very, very exhausting stage. Some very tired riders making their way up there. Uh, Simon Schneller and uh, Urs Huber, winners of stage one, step up onto the third step of the podium. Excellent showing by the Swiss and the German. And the Italians, Fabian Ravensteiner and Samueli Poro are coming into the picture. Second place today on uh, stage three. And taking the win today. A first time for the Canyon Northway pair of Andreas Sivolt, the marathon world champion, and his partner from the Czech Republic, Martin Storsek, the uh, stage winners of the 2021 Absa Cape Epic Stage 3 here at uh, Saronsburg. Momentum definitely in the favor of the Canyon Northwave team, having uh, been on the podium all week and uh, were third and then second yesterday, and of course taking the win today. So. Things are looking up for the uh, the German and the uh, Czech Republic rider. Absolutely, they're starting to find. Uh, as you suggested they're finding, they're settling into the race. They've now got the measure of what this is uh, about. Of course, they're not that inexperienced in any stretch of the imagination as marathon stage races, or marathon races. But this is uh, their first time to the premier mountain bike stage race in the world, and uh, it is a different kettle of the fish altogether. In uh, yellow jerseys, once again, the race leaders, Matt Beers and Jordan Saru. That lead has cut down now from 2 minutes 13 to 1 minute and 43 seconds going into stage four. So the racing is, uh, well, it was red hot today. It is going to be absolutely firing off again for the rest of the week. Bulls are four minutes back. Yeah, we're just under four minutes back in third place. Do not discount that pairing when it comes down to the uh, overall win. Not with the experience and also the critical backup team that they've got in place. They have got an, a very rock solid insurance policy. If one of them breaks a wheel, if uh, Huber or uh, Schneller need some assistance, they have it on hand with uh, probably the, uh, the most uh, present active mechanics possible. And the other teams, of course, don't have quite as much of a luxury. So if something does go wrong, they are ready for action. Uh, the squad from the Bulls, highly developed and highly evolved uh, backup team, and also a, uh, an excellent logistics team too. Back with the women's race. And well, we, we last saw this pair, it was uh, Luti, who Ariane Luti was well ahead of uh, Robin de Groot going up the Fantis Pass climb. And uh, now she's uh, back with her. And uh, a little bit stalled by the tree fellas who are uh, clearing the uh, forest of pines and uh, they get past them and uh, continue on. But uh, 
They've been a little bit stalled by Robin de Kruit, uh, struggling on that climb in their pursuit of the overall leaders, 91 Songo Specialized, Sina Fry and Laura Stigger, who went up that climb so skillfully and uh, descended clearly very well as well. Mm. And now we see here the, the teamwork is back. Uh, obviously, Ariane is the stronger of uh, the two of them uh, today, and it is her responsibility to make it, uh, make it uh, as easy as possible for Robin to get to the finish line. Nothing is ever easy in this race, but if you can help your partner, you should do that as much as you can. Eventually, it will make you the fastest uh, at the finish line, and that's, that's what matters. So the dynamic between the, the, these two riders, they're clearly very well matched. They were fifth and sixth at Marathon World Championships uh, two and a half weeks ago, and uh, it's certainly switched today. And uh, interesting to know how that, uh, how that dynamic has changed. And mm. um, in terms of a team partnership, it's not always like that. Often there is a dominant partner. Yeah, and maybe they only realized on that really steep climb in that moment that the, the strength within their partnership today uh, it could be that it was hard for Robin to communicate to Ariane that she was fading a little bit. We all know that in the heat of racing, um, communication can be super difficult, especially if uh, you have a, a chopper, a helicopter chopper uh, over your head. Uh, just shouting and uh, can be more difficult to hear. But it's good to see them back together and uh, really it looks like Ariane is taking on uh, the role, uh, the responsibility of being uh, the stronger in, in, in the team. Annika, you mentioned earlier um, in the week the, that sometimes it's easier when there is always one dominant team member, then the ritual and the, uh, the routine is, is pretty much set. Um, how much of a, a difference does it make when, uh, when teams are evenly matched like this team? Um, yeah, it, it, it means that it is much, much more clear when one is struggling a little bit and you need to be much faster at changing your strategy immediately when you're out there and often you need to change the strategy at a point where one is really suffering meaning there are less clear brains to make that decision so it, it really does make a difference if uh, if it's not always the same um, how to say ranking of strength within the team this is the leaders uh, Sina Fry and uh, Laura Stigger who have uh, been dominant throughout. They won the prologue stage one and stage two and they're in prime position to make it uh, a fourth win today. What is remarkable is how close together these riders are. They never seem to, there never seems to be a gap between them. They are literally almost like they're glued glued to each other or attached by a rope. It's very rare that we see a gap between them. So some excellent cohesion. Clearly having learned that this is one of the most critical things in any kind of two-person team racing is that uh, the cooperation between the two and uh, of course keeps morale up when the two riders are together and uh, take certainly they look like they're pretty evenly matched in terms of physically they're taking turns at the front and it doesn't seem to be like there is any major pressure on the 91 songo specialized team yeah but i think the conclusions we can derive from that is that they are so evenly matched they've got different styles and yet they are perfectly matched they, they don't leave each other alone and Perhaps they are riding <laughs> very comfortably. Mm. They're, they're, they're riding well within their, 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 their comfort zones at the moment. It is. They're really, of, of course, they're working super hard. Yeah. But um, they are in a comfort, a comfortable position where uh, often you ride on instinct, and the instinct they have is, is still very good. Meaning they are they are feeling comfortable. Once you're really outside your comfortable uh, comfort zone. That's when you see that all of a sudden you start making bad decisions because your your instinct, yeah, is under pressure. All those little gaps start mm. start appearing, and uh, they're going up that switchback uh, section, the new trail we saw a little bit earlier in the men's race, and again, just uh, in perfect uh, harmony. This is the section that Matt Beers was referring to, which was uh, for him perhaps the the bit that he struggled in the most. Uh, obviously there was the steep climb where the major split happened, but uh, he said that this section was uh, particularly challenging for him. Laura Stigger on the front and uh, Sina Fry behind her. The Austrian and the Swiss rider both uh, really had uh, excellent years on the World Cup circuit. They've had busy years and uh, they brought that form and they brought their energy to the uh, longest race of the year they'll have, have ridden 
and they are so far proving uh, completely up to the challenge. True. They are very evenly matched. Uh, I would guess that Laura may be the, a little bit, just slightly weaker uh, than, than Sina, and Sina is maybe wary and aware of this, and that's why she lets uh, Laura go to the front, because no matter what, Sina will always be able to, to match the, the climbing speed of Laura, and Laura being at the front uh, has the opportunity to set the pace that makes her feel comfortable still. So I would guess that is a little bit the tactic uh, that we see going on here. No rider behind them uh, down uh, two switchbacks already. And uh, as they go up here, we'll perhaps get an idea of how big that uh, that gap is. This we is speak about the, right, the line of sight. There is no yeah. line of sight from Team Salismid to 91 Songer Specialized. Not good for the morale. So Team Salismid uh, will look to hold off Team Faces, CST, and uh, look to consolidate and focus on their own efforts and keep those efforts up and make sure that they can, can keep the damage control. It's, it, they're in damage control moment right now. They'll drop over now after that uh, climb and making it again. Uh, their efforts was making it look easy, but I mean, <laughs> they, it's definitely not easy yet by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, the way they are riding, um, it's, it does look like that. But yeah, yeah, there they are. So they're just starting. Mm. And I, I would guess that when uh, Team Salas met, uh, entered the bottom of this climb, uh, they probably weren't able to, to see Cena and Laura. And just, you can see so far ahead and not being able to see team in front of you is really hard for the head. So now it's all about uh, Ariane Lutti and Robin de Ford uh, really pacing themselves in the best possible way, all the way to the finish line. And perhaps Robin's having a, a, a tough day today, and that's, that, I mean, there isn't, I'm sure, an event, a, a stage race like this, where you don't have a day that's going to be worse than another, and then you recover. Will she perhaps have an opportunity to recover a little, and maybe she finds a bit more of her legs in the last uh, eight to nine kilometers? Yeah, it, it can be, it can be, especially if they are now settling for a pace where Robin feels a little bit more comfortable, maybe that would give her a few opportunities to just regain some of her energy, and by now they know they don't have much climbing lift, maybe only this little stretch, and then from there on it's actually flat or downhill, mm. so she can look forward to that, and then she knows the finish line is within reach. But it looks like the gap between team number one and two is opening up. Uh, it's definitely grown since we saw them last time. And I'm not sure if uh, Sina and Laura are aware of that, but if they were able to look back uh, on the top of the climb in the, the open fields, they could see, okay, we, we see no other teams. We are actually on our own. And that will give them a huge motivation boost. Yeah, it took, took them maybe two minutes to get up there. They'll think, well, there's no one there, so we must have about two minutes, which is about, it's about two minutes and 10 to 20. So uh, very, very comfortable situation for this pair, uh, Laura Stigger and uh, Sina Fry. It's always a sign when you see the, uh, the leading team or any chasing team uh, looking back at, uh, there is a, a consciousness of the rider uh, concern, in fact, about uh, what's going on behind them. And uh, I have to admit, I haven't seen uh, Cena Fry or Laura Stigger looking back for too long. No, They're I agree looking with dead you. Ahead. Yes. <laughs> Full focus uh, yeah. uh, forward. Yeah, you either you you are either starting to fatigue and tire, or you know the team behind you are catching you, uh, despite the fact that you're emptying the tank. So uh, they haven't they haven't had to do that at all mm -hmm. um, in this no. race. They could probably feel that Team Salasmet was uh, fading on that climb, and that was enough knowledge or insight for them to, to know exactly, OK, this is our moment. We just need to go and do our thing, and we'll be fine. Yeah, another look at these beautiful trails. They're very remote, and uh, as we've been saying, they uh, are pretty new, these trails. So if you'd like to, if you're a rider, wherever you are in the world, you can come out and, uh, and, and ride out here, but you can't just pitch up and ride these trails. Make contact with the local mountain bike uh, trail uh, clubs, and uh, they'll facilitate uh, permissions uh, where they meet, uh, might be required and, and uh, purchase a permit and come and enjoy these trails because they are spectacular. And you'll see more over the next few days. And it's just a little uh, taste of what uh, the beautiful Western Cape has to offer in terms of mountain bike trails. That's true. The riders don't actually know the trails, not always. 
Uh, some riders with a little bit of knowledge or uh, uh, local insight would know some of the trails. But for example here, when we had a close-up of uh, Sina's bike, we could see there was a white sticker on her top tube. And that is, uh, that is crucial to have that. So you, on this, this sticker would be a picture of the entire stage. You would know exactly how long the stage is and you would know the, the profile. So you would know, okay, at this point of the course we would go into a climb or uh, at this point we would go into a descent or at this point this is where the water point is. And so if, you, if you're out there and you start to feel thirsty and you, you're worried, okay, when, when will the water point come? You can see, oh, it's actually only two more kilometers and, and that can ease your mind a little bit. So it's really good to have that sticker on your bike so you always have the, the overview. And you can plan your pacing and your nutrition and uh, the efforts that are to come. Very important to uh, the experience of these two. It seems that their 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 ability and their experience in the race is uh, is at odds with their with their age and um, and the number of uh, Absa Cape epics they have completed, which of course is zero. Um, but they are riding like absolute veterans of the of the event, and uh, just from their approach, their demeanour, and uh, of course their firepower. They are absolutely dominating the women's race so far. Instinct, uh, you talk about them, I mean, and that uh, clearly they have a racing instinct. They've got a, um, a camaraderie between them that is, uh, I, I you know, don't know if they've raced every, had before this event ridden together, um, other than against each other in, in cross country races. Um, and sometimes it just clicks. And, uh, it really, really does. From what we're seeing on the bike, which is our only uh, the way we can understand, is that it clicks. But uh, you've seen them off the bike uh, in the camp. Mm. Yeah, and they they really get along well together. Kind of almost the same age and coming from the same region, uh, or not region, but they're both from Central Central Europe. So they have a little bit the same mindset in many ways, and having shared a similar history, being really, really good uh, from a very young age and having to go through all the, the age categories, being a junior, being a U23, and now both of them are riding in the elite category. And Laura actually choosing to do so. She, on paper, is still a U23 rider, but she feels like she, she wants to do the elite category. She wants to race up there with the best, and she's very much capable of. So a little glance from, uh, from Sina just quickly mm -hmm. over her left shoulder. Um, she might have seen a few farmers and their buckies, their, their pickup trucks up the top, because uh, there's no uh, team anywhere close to them. No, but you don't know until you exactly. really know. So exactly. Just double checking here. You have no idea when you're on, especially on a, on a remote ride like this. Uh, there's no information out there. There are no race radios. Uh, there's no one feeding you information and uh, or reliable information. Uh, at that. So now they're heading down the flats and uh, it'll be pretty much a drag race to the uh, finish for Sina Fry and Laura Stigger. Keep it safe and sound. As I say, that little uh, switch there from Sina. They've had no issues uh, that we are aware of uh, at all and they are going uh, seemingly inexorably towards a, another stage win here. Remarkable uh, performance. Beautiful trails and roads up high in the mountains uh, above Tilbach, which is the playground today for the stage three of the Absa Cape Epic. Stage four takes us from here towards Wellington, but not all the way to Wellington as they pass through the hydration zone. At kilometer 82, yep. meaning they only have nine Ks to go. It is predominantly slightly downhill, uh, but they will have to put, push the pedals all the way. There's uh, no free kilometer in, in this race. And now we can, we can see how they start uh, shifting, taking turns at the front. Now Sina is going to the front, uh, which again leads me a little bit to believe that Sina could be riding with a little bit more energy, a little bit more power than, than Laura, even though they're really well and really equally matched. Uh, just those tiny signs that, okay, now we get to the flat part, now the, 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 the hard work has to be put in. Um, she is giving some uh, slipstream to her partner, Laura, just allowing her to recover for a bit. But we'll see them take turns at the front, that's for sure. 
Yeah, that's the dynamic of a team sharing the workload. When uh, each has the, uh, the the dip that inevitably happens in a in a stage race, be it for a day or, or for a stage. Here they come, uh, Ariane Luti and Roman de Groot sweeping down these uh, switchbacks before they head to the hydration zone. Yeah, about 10 k's to go, not just just under. The local uh, farmers, uh, people who live in these parts, know their way up onto the mountain and they're able to go and uh, get close to the action, which is one of the great attractions of mountain bike uh, racing. So how many minutes do you think they are apart? A few? Two? Two, two? minutes mm -hmm. and the 27 time, seconds the last time when we see them through the hydration. Yes. 230. 230. So at that uh, hydration point before the steep part of the climb, uh, we saw them at... Uh, they were pretty much together, Team uh, Salas made in 91 Songer Specialized. That gap, of course, stretched out hugely. And uh, the last time check we got was 2 minutes 30. But we're waiting for them to reach the 82-kilometer mark. Uh, 91 Songer Specialized have already passed through the 82-kilometer mark, and we were waiting for Team Salas made and Team Faces CST to go through that point just to see. But that was quite a few minutes ago, at least three minutes ago. So let's see what what the time is at that point and we'll get a clear picture of just how dominant this pair really are on the stage and I think just from their body language looking at this team 91 Songo Specialized in the picture right now and uh, back if we look to, to compare that to the body language of Team Salas Meds, Ariane Lutin, and Robin Ducruet, it's clear uh, who which riders are, are enjoying are enjoying dominance in this particular stage and of course during the week. Mm. Every now and then we will see Sina here at the front having a glance over her shoulder and she's actually not looking for competitors. She's looking at Laura, making sure that whenever Sina had to do a little bit of an acceleration out of a corner or something like that, that Laura is still on her wheel. She don't want to open up tiny gaps all the time that would force Laura to, uh, to accelerate because that's, that's such a draining effort, constantly having to close tiny, tiny gaps uh, to your partner. And again, they aren't aware of the lead, but they are fairly comfortably ahead on the GC by seven and a half minutes at the start of the day. But they know nothing else other than to uh, go. There's a three minutes, three minutes and five seconds. So it has expanded out at that uh, 81.5 kilometer time check that I mentioned, that uh, time check. Uh, so they're, they're, they're opening it up. They are, and we can see on the body language they're still feeling good. They, they, they start to look like uh, a cross-country race right now, going for like every single meter. Candice Lill and Mariska Strauss, the African uh, jersey wearers from uh, Faces CST, are in third place. And probably uh, another three minutes behind uh, Salusmed as well. But look at this. It's as if the chasing team was uh, 10 seconds behind them. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful to see the enthusiasm that these mm. two young women are approaching this uh, race with. A lot of younger, uh, more inexperienced riders for, with stage racing would, would um, maybe show up with a little bit more uh, defensive or conservative strategy, but these two are not. They are going flat out, full out. Um, but also for the team that they're in, the, the Sango Specialized team, um, for them, this, this race plays a big role in, in, in the team calendar in the, in the whole year. So they have been motivated with a lot of talk about this race, with a lot of preparation. And that's why you can see it all channels into how they're riding right now. We've got a great history of, uh, of success at this event uh, across various categories. And so, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a legacy to maintain here. Well, I think the uh, specialized team Christoph Sauser was driving a lot of these initiatives and uh, the Bulls came out in 2007 with a hugely professional outfit. They had a caravan, they had a team manager and they had a, a full logistics plan. They came later on with their, uh, in the, the late 2000s with their uh, backup team and uh, just kind of set the standard with, uh, with how the professionalism and speci Songo Specialized uh, as a team 
that really also has pushed the boundaries of uh, preparation and logistics and uh, making sure that teams, if any team arrives uh, as a rookie, they have a massive head start against the other rookie teams with the, uh, the general, the, the collective knowledge from the, from the trade team. Remember the uh, reports from uh, one of the riders who rode with uh, Christoph Sazer, David George, said that when he arrived in the uh, caravan and he was cooked uh, a meal and he received, uh, he received a plate with, uh, uh, with quinoa on it. And he'd never eaten quinoa before. This is clearly Christoph Sazer's uh, chosen choice of health food and uh, very health conscious and um, iterating that eating healthy and uh, recovering is the, one of the most important thing of this and uh, definitely transforming um, the uh, the backup team and the, the logistics teams of the race right. and uh, how important that really is for uh, for any rider whether they've ridden nine events or whether they've ridden none um, good that uh, that so much is taken care of where all we have to do is just focus on the athletic challenge and the tactical challenge well, this is extraordinary. These uh, two, Sino Fry and uh, Laura Sticker, are absolutely emptying uh, their tanks in getting to the finish here. Blasting away off the front of this race as they close in on Saronsburg. It's beautiful to watch. There's enthusiasm, there's energy, there's uh, commitment to racing. Regardless of how big their lead is or what the race situation is, we're going flat box here to get to the finish. They are. They're really racing on instinct here, and it's, it's beautiful to watch. Uh, they have no they know they have a gap they have no idea uh, how big it is and you can see they're trying to extend it with every fiber in their body because if they can go into tomorrow's stage with an even bigger gap gap that means you know the pressure on your shoulders your shoulders just like sink a little bit more it goes off and uh, it makes it really is a huge motivation boost and, and really good for the self confidence and for yeah for the for the rest of the the, the race and that old mantra of anything can happen at any time mm. will be sitting there and that's why you want to give yourself an insurance uh, policy by building exactly. on that lead giving yourself as much time because yeah well they may well go through eight days without any issues at all but mm. that would be a, a rare occurrence at some stage they may well pick up a, a puncture or whatever it is and then they've, uh, they've they've got an insurance policy exactly and that's really what you want it eases your mind a lot and if the race were to finish right now we've got a an idea of what the uh, virtual general classification if the race were to finish immediately as we see it this pair would have an over ten and a half minute advantage on their nearest rivals which is a fantastic buffer to have um, at the halfway point in the race we just had some reports from the uh, time check we've just seen the data from the timing mat team faces CSD the ABSA African jersey leaders in third spot overall and third spot on the day at five minutes 32 back so the first riders to pass through were team 91 songa specialized the second riders through that checkpoint at the 82 kilometer mark Ariane Nuti and robin de Groot. and third team through that checkpoint at five minutes 32 team places csd Ariane drilling it on the front here and robin not able to stay with her no, Ariane should have a quick glimpse over her shoulder because all the, the work she's, she's putting in right now, I wouldn't see, say that it's wasted, but she's really not putting Robin in a situation where Robin can uh, benefit from this. Now you see Robin has to accelerate and I wonder if Robin was trying to communicate to Ariane, hey, hey, slow down, slow down. Uh, maybe the chopper made it impossible. Uh, that is the case, speaking from experience, you cannot hear a thing. It brings us a lot of nice pictures, um, but it also makes communication difficult sometimes. And that's why if you're the stronger, you need to look over your shoulder, see where your partner is all the time. She eventually looked over her shoulder and has eased back to La Robin. With the idea not to be safe, but Robin, you go in the front here and uh, we'll get home. Yes, now Ariane has to really be careful that she manages her efforts uh, well. Uh, they want to go fast, but she want to make sure that uh, Robin stays on her wheel all the time. Can only be as fast as your partner. Exactly. And now you can see that she's really becoming aware of that. Like, okay, I need, I, we are in a risk of of, uh, of me opening up gaps all the time, and it's very very inefficient riding. But I wonder if they they were surprised by the the difference in the strength between them today because. Yesterday we saw a picture that was a little bit the opposite. So maybe they have to actually learn 
that now roles have uh, changed a little bit and need to adapt to that um, as soon as possible. Yeah, it swings and roundabouts in this event. The riders have uh, good days and not so good days and good phases in a stage and not so good. So it's reading that uh, of your partner and uh, managing your efforts as uh, best you can to match those of the partner. Exactly. And it could be tomorrow we, s we will see the opposite uh, situation between Arian and Robin. Uh, that Robin will again feel good and be the strongest. Uh, that's a fascinating part about this race. It can really change day by day and that's why communication, planning beforehand, debriefing is, is so important because your race instinct uh, develops throughout the race and it's important that you learn from everything that happens so your instinct gets better and better. No such issues here with Sina Fry and uh, Laura Stigger. We just keep firing on all cylinders. Sina Fry, the rider on the front right now, the Swiss rider, is the current world short track champion. In fact, it was uh, in, on the World Cup scene in, uh, in, the, in, you could say, at the highest level. This was her only victory, and she certainly made it count. It was her only victory all season in that um, on, the, on the World Cup scene. And... Uh, direct contrast to today the absolute long format racing of mountain biking at the Apsa Cape Epic eight days and today's stage of 91 kilometers showing her absolute versatility as a rider and a big future for her she is the current Olympic silver medalist and uh, back here to face a CST they were five minutes 32 down at that time check and uh, they're looking to looking to consolidate they know they're going to be putting time on the fourth fourth place team uh, which will be that is computer mania they know that computer mania have had a bad time of it um, team fair tree are lying in fifth place overall at the start of at the start of the day and uh, we did see land rover ladies team marie rabi and heli preen heli preen having a seemingly having a hurt her wrist really badly and suspecting a break and in seventh spot sarah hill and vera Lorza. Um, over 54, 54 minutes back. So Faces CST look really good for a podium overall when they reach the Val estate. And today looking to consolidate that lead at five minutes down. So they will just take it in turns at the front, make sure they measure their efforts. And we have Candace, Candace Lil behind Mariska Strauss right now. Mariska rides in front just to avoiding some of the puddles. There we go. Did see them uh, on the World Cup scene this year. They uh, are very evenly matched pairing and uh, seem to be showing great cohesion today. And in fact, during the week, they've turned, they've turned a really good partnership, a really, uh, they've got good morale, they know each other really well. And in fact, we haven't really ever seen this uh, this pairing come together for the Apsa Cape Epic. We've always, uh, many fans of, of the two riders, the two South Africans, have wanted this to be a pairing. It seemed like it made sense, but conflicting trade teams and uh, calendars and agendas haven't made it possible and finally we get to see how this plays out on the world stage and there are those uh, bridges we, we we ride over bridges and see them and uh, we, we forget them very quickly but if it weren't for the bridges we wouldn't be riding because uh, it gets us to transition across rivers across uh, gates or whatever it might be gaps and uh, those are all part of uh, making these trails uh, work and making them such uh, enjoyable uh, feast for these riders and uh, 50 of those built uh, around this course uh, by uh, Dion Wilkins and his team and some of the bridges are um, are purpose built for the race and in fact well, when the all 50 of those were purpose built there are other bridges that haven't been but yeah yeah there are many river crossings as yeah. well and uh, the crew that, uh, that do the dress rehearsal of the route so this route is always pre-ridden before the actual race and the crew that uh, that pre-ride the race often have to contend with far more extreme conditions, uh, trails that are uh, disused, you could say, and uh, crossing rivers and, um, and 
course, crossing all those farmlands, having to navigate the fences and the rough trails. So the riders, you couldn't say they have an easy, an easy time of it. It's always harder when you're racing at the limit. Like these two, currently, they look like they, they're not quite on the limit, Annika. It looks like they're riding within themselves. They've certainly shown no sign of their efforts over the last few days. They were pinning it yesterday. We could see them in the stage out in front and also on stage one when they were uh, on their own for a very long time, for almost half the stage. And uh, showing no letting up the fatigue of the last three days. It's showing no sign of that. No, not at all. And now they will be so close to the finish line that they start getting the signs at the side of the course, counting down the kilometers. And speaking from experience, it really motivates you. You want to get to the next sign, like ticking off those kilometers. And it's so motivating. They probably only have a few kilometers left right now. And they would know, they, they can smell the finish line right now. And that's why we see them going so hard that the, it looks like the start of a, a World Cup race. It's astonishing at the speed at which they're riding and, and how contrasting they are. They're seen as very busy on the bike and uh, Laura, uh, very still, and, and uh, but following her line immaculately, just a couple of inches behind her back wheel there. This is high class uh, riding at high speed. Beautiful to watch. Here is uh, Ariane Luti and Robert de Groot in second place on the stage, in second place on GC, but having a tough day here. Robin is having a, a really hard day, and Ariane, met. key to her success is managing Robin's day today. Certainly some of the most, well, one of the most experienced riders in the race. Um, she's, Ariane Luti is heading for her ninth Absa Cape Epic, and uh, navigating her way through this. And we have these, yes, they've done it. They've yes. managed to, to help. <laughs> I couldn't say they've held off the uh, the chase. They've uh, extended that lead, and Laura Stigger and Cena Fry, Team 91 Songa Specialized, are they're going to make it pretty much a full house of victories. They are indeed 91 Songo Specialized. Laura Stigger on the front here, and uh, Cena Fry is just uh, hugging her wheel, and they'll head into the finish straight. Another remarkable, immaculate performance from 91 Songo Specialized. They are the stage winners. Laura Stick and Cena Fry, four out of four. They have been absolutely brilliant. What a ride. Held nothing back today at the uh, tail end. They made their move on the frontiers climb and made it stick all the way to the finish and just increased their advantage over their chasers, Salas Med. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant racing and amazing to watch and you can see, look, it looked like they were <laughs> so much in control, but I can tell you they were working absolutely hard out there, giving it everything and they'll be happy to see uh, what kind of a gap they have been able to pull on the rest of the field. Well, we're looking back to the timing for uh, Team Salas made to come and we just had a quick look at the weather for, at the weather currently in uh, Toolbox, it's 33 degrees. We saw Cena Fry getting as much water into her as possible. And uh, we need to think of the uh, amateurs who will be uh, coming into the race. And uh, it look, looks like the temperatures will be what, uh, right now before midday. Uh, temperatures are predicted to climb into the 35 region. It's going to really hurt up in uh, the mountains there as they make their way. But uh, for this pair, it's all over now. It's about recovery and uh, a few commitments before then. And we'll be part of that as we will hear for them. I'm, I'm very, very short, sure, but uh, a brilliant job by two high-class young racers. And a lot of debriefing going on here. It's not always possible to... to really talk about every single detail out there while you're out there but it's, it's important to get any misunderstandings and details or moments uh, clear with your partner because like i told it gives you that uh, it strengthens your race instinct for the days ahead well, Ariane and uh, robin also would have just passed a marker there that uh, would probably say one kilometer to go to the finish heads down focused uh, and just getting the job done here 
It's been the last uh, 10, 12 Ks have been really, really tough for them. Yeah, it, it really, really has. And now we can see the teamwork here really being perfected and they look much more in sync. Uh, they will know that they're, they're just about to be there and they want to go as fast as possible uh, as they can. And it looks like Robin has been able to recover a bit and now she can take a turn at the front. So excellent teamwork here. Uh, Ariane uh, having given uh, Robin did the, the needed uh, rest, so now she's uh, back uh, to full full form, full swing. Not only they're chasing uh, down the leaders, but of course they will be aware that, uh, well, they might be aware that uh, Face and CST are looking as though they're having a pretty decent day and they're trying to uh, close them down as well from behind. So there are on the right hand side Candace and uh, Mariska. So they'll take a right turn here on the cut grass and into the field and into the finished precinct of stage three of the 2021 Absa Cape. They think Robin up the saddle one more time just to try and stay with uh, Ariane, who's been fearsome today. And uh, they will make one last turn to take second place on the day and consolidate their position in second place. However, they would have lost more time to 91 Songo Specialized coming into uh, the finish. So it's clear that Robin de Groot just doesn't have the snap in her legs that uh, that she, we've seen over the last few days. Marian Luti will be uh, going to be very cognizant of that. Around the last corner and come to the finish. Robin has to make the effort to uh, close in with her partner. And uh, don't worry, Ariane will know exactly what Robin's going through and will have a complete understanding uh, for what uh, the day is all about. But uh, they have finished Team Sellers Med in second place today. Robin de Groot and uh, Ariane Luti of uh, Team Sellers Med. And uh, they will have lost a bit of time to the overall. And it just makes, makes the task of winning this overall that much more difficult. But uh, as you can get a look there, that Robin really it has uh, emptied a tank. Great respect between the riders, I think, that. Uh, Having raced at the very sharp end of the field in the marathon, uh, in the marathon world, oh, and we, oh, this is the uh, Bart Brenchens. Bart Brenchens, Peter Vessels Peter in Vessels. the Grand Masters, uh, rolling across the finish line. I'm not sure that they did win today's stage. I think there may have been a Grand Masters team in. I'm not sure, but I fancy that uh, Bart Booker and uh, Angel Kerber might have finished ahead of them in fact they did yes by five minutes five minutes yes so that'll uh, throw the cat amongst the pigeons in uh, a very competitive grandmasters meanwhile robin and uh, ariane can begin their recovery and candace lil and mariska strauss powering towards the finish uh, the third place team the apps african jersey leaders and the face of cst team let's go down to liesel at the finish Ah, we'll uh, pick up with Lisa shortly. She's just gathering uh, the riders around to uh, have a chat, but uh, this is an opportunity to bring home the uh, pair of Candice Lil and uh, Mariska Strauss, who looks like they may have, may have made a little bit of a dent in the second place team's uh, position as they charged towards the finish over the last few kilometers. But again, they've had incident today. They lost a little bit of time and had to work hard to regain contact with the uh, group after the early crash that saw the computer mania team lose huge time right there. Well, you know the full effect of that later on uh, once you see them uh, come in but uh, this is a good ride by uh, the two south africans the current cross-country champion candace lill and alongside her the uh, former champion mariska strauss making up team faces cst as they finish third on stage three at the 2021 APSA Cape Epic, and a cooling towel will be the most welcome thing around each of their necks, with the degree temperatures around about 35 degrees at the finish. Well done, uh, young ladies. They've done a great job today to keep themselves on the podium and in the hunt. You cannot be uh, anywhere other than uh, close, and they're, they're on the podium, so they're, they're there. They're, they're doing their best, and they put themselves in, in a good position. High fives all round, absolutely. Let's go down to Liesel now. With our leading women's team, congratulations, making it 444. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, it was super tough like the end, but um, we had a really good teamwork and it's amazing to win another stage. 
And talking about teamwork, how important was it out there during the climbs and down that single track? Yeah, I couldn't uh, imagine doing it without Sina because today I suffered quite a lot, especially at the steep uphill. Um, Sina, yeah, was really uh, patient to, to wait for me, although she could maybe go faster. And yeah, I really have to thank her. Thank, I'm really thankful to have her in my team. And yeah, it's amazing to, yeah, especially in the flat and changing and yeah, take care of ourselves and that's great. And do you realize how much of a lead you actually put on the teams? Were you actually expecting to put so, so much of a lead onto the, the woman behind you? Yeah, of course we was hoping, like we, yeah, like we was just hoping that it's like a little bit a bigger gap because we, like the end was pretty fast and like we suffered a lot and it's um, super nice to extend the lead. Well, congratulations. See you on the podium and on the start line tomorrow. Well done. Thank you. Well, it has been uh, outstanding from uh, Sina Fry and uh, Laura Sticker. They've extended that lead to over 11 minutes. So a really top-class uh, performance. Philemon Tabon and Jan Matshoya riding for Kuro, where Philemon now heads up their mountain bike program. And he was, of course, the pro with uh, Paiga Eurosteel for many years, a wonderful rider and a great character and uh, making a difference in the sport wherever he goes, which is uh, really, really fantastic. The Estonians have rolled across the line. Uh, Latvians, beg your pardon, Rainlord and Argo Rotmets have finished their race and finished their day out there. One wonders how the Estonian has gone. Peter Prus and uh, Manuel Plim way back in our coverage today. We saw them with an exploded back wheel. Um, we wonder where he said he was going to walk to the to the tech zone and see if they could finish the stage. As riders who ride inside the top 10. Um, it's easy to say that right there, but uh, whether they would have uh, pursued that, I'm not sure. Beautiful Val de Vie is where we are, and that's where the grand finale will finish. The village will be built here shortly. It is absolutely stunning. But let's go to uh, Sarah Onsberg and hear from more of the riders. It's 35 degrees at Sarensburg. I've got uh, Robin and Ariane with me. How was it out there? <laughs> tough, tough, yeah, and very hot. Yeah, the, the women's race is always quite tactical. It's so nice uh, that we have a separate start and, um, yeah, no drafting is allowed between men and women. It's really something I'm always trying to push organizers for. Um, here we've got it since 2016 and it just makes this race so, so exciting. Uh, Laura and Sina, obviously have a lot of road experience one can see it and you know the speed sometimes gets really really slow and uh, it may look uh, strange from the outside but that's tactical racing and uh, they they're very smart riders i can see that and it's super nice to to race against them had you planned to go out for attack and did it go as planned today well we just wanted to keep uh, the, the pressure on i mean to, to attack them really is very, very hard. We don't have those kind of high watts that they have, but we constantly need to be there. And um, just before the long climb, I suddenly got away a little bit. There was an opportunity that could have led to something and they will come again and we just keep trying. Robin, on that climb, how were you feeling? Oh no, I was not feeling very well. <laughs> um, I, I had a bit of a bad patch there, actually a really bad patch. And uh, yeah, I just had to keep, Moving forward, I tried not to look too far ahead and just focused on meter by meter. <laughs> well, well done. And uh, as we know, in this, uh, it's day by day, and we'll see you coming back stronger tomorrow. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Amal. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, as Robin has suggested, there she wasn't feeling good on that climb, and we could see she was uh, taking strain there, which made the rest of the the, the, the stage uh, that much more. Uh, tricky. Ariane saying she tried a, an attack and perhaps there was the, uh, the, the first indication that maybe Robin wasn't having the, her best day. As uh, uh, we're watching the riders come in now, this is the mixed leaders, Sebastian and Laura Stark uh, heading home. We saw Lachlan Morton and Kenneth uh, Sakaya come through as, uh, as well. There they are. Well, Lachlan Morton seems to have his chain back on. We yep. saw him earlier in the race, uh, really early on. In fact, uh, he'd lost his chain or at least it had, it had broken and he was carrying it um, and he was just wheeling his bike along to get to the tech zone and 
Educate, Team EF Education First is well known around the world for uh, their slightly alternative approach to um, to racing. They are um, officially a, a World Tour road team. But Lachlan Morton and Alex Howes and um, some of the other riders have been uh, expanding their horizons with different races. They've been doing some gravel races and Lachlan Morton was due to race with Alex Howes uh, last year in 2020. With the event being cancelled, he definitely wanted to return. And unfortunately, with Howes pulling out, Kenneth, Kenneth uh, took his place. And <coughs> excuse me, Kenneth took his place and uh, and uh, is a worthy partner. They're certainly uh, broadening their horizons here at the Absa Cape Epic, having not ridden in on these trails before. It's a it's a remarkable, remarkable, remarkable experience for both of them. And the Australian and the and the Kenyan are certainly enjoying themselves out at the Absa Cape Epic. And the German couple behind them, Laura and Sebastian Stark, the leaders in the Virgin Active Mixed category, will come round the corner. And Laura says, well, look, you know, it's not often you get a chance to uh, beat a World Tour rider on the, on the line. We're going to do that. But, uh, yeah, they've done brilliantly here. The uh, Mixed are uh, home. And uh, another excellent day for the Starks. And while Lachlan and Kenneth go and get refreshed at the uh, hydration station, They'll be get ready, getting ready for the podium time. The Starks will be uh, cleaning up and making sure that their jerseys look spick and span for their podium. Yeah, the Woolworths recovery zone is where the uh, the riders head to to uh, get uh, their meals uh, post ride, and they're really well sorted after the highly sorted after uh, those uh, meals. Lucky Morton, I think we're going to hear from Lucky Morton perhaps uh, shortly. Let's go down to Liesel. She's busy talking to more riders. Liesel. As Mariska and Candace get their nutrition in, what happened out there? Another fall? It's three for three? Four for four. <laughs> four for four? We can laugh about it, but how are you feeling, seriously? Um, a little bit battered and bruised, but yeah, luckily nothing major. Um, and yeah, it's racing, it happened, so glad we managed to, to consolidate and get to the finish in one piece. Well, you've done it in one piece. How was that uh, trying to catch up with the, the ladies in the lead? Yeah, not easy, but um, it's always better to just stay calm, um, not try and make too much of a big effort to chase. We just chase back at a good pace, um, not to spend too much energy early on. It works out fine. Now I'm seeing you guys fueling up. How important is nutrition uh, after the race as well as during uh, the event? <laughs> Super important. It's, you're not just fueling for today, you're actually fueling for the rest of the week. So it's important to, to get that in ASAP. Um, while your body is still susceptible to all the nutrition factors and everything, so no, you really, you really need to eat, especially, especially in the beginning of a stage ride like this. It's towards the end you kind of get so fed up with eating, so you have to put back. And race plan for tomorrow? Sure, tomorrow is a bit of a shortened stage um, from what it originally was. So 74 k's, it'll be a bit of a relief, but. We race cross country and we know that uh, shorter races can actually be harder. <laughs> so, yeah, I think to just try and uh, yeah, defend where we are, but also take a chance if we see it, an opportunity. Well, good luck. See you on the podium and see you on the start line tomorrow. Thanks so much. Candice Lill and uh, Mariska Strauss referring there, of course, to tomorrow's stage, stage four, which is originally scheduled to finish in Wellington from uh, here at Saronsburg and going over Bainscourt Pass. Unfortunately, Bainscourt Pass, all fortunately, is going through uh, rehabilitation, a long-term uh, uh, rehab of the, the road and the, 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 uh, the, the walls and so on. So it's been closed for all year and uh, no access for anyone up uh, Bainscourt Pass now. So the race will finish at Slunghook, at uh, Houdini Spa and Slunghook. Uh, this side, if you like, of uh, the mountain pass of Bainscliff, and then the riders will be transferred across to, to Wellington. So a day of 73 kilometers and 1,650 meters of climbing tomorrow, as opposed to a little longer and a little harder. But, uh, we saw Jenny Stenach and Amy McDougall coming across the line, their team Fair Tree. As we reflect on stage three in the men's elite race uh, here at the 2021 Absa Cape Epic. It was a day of 91 kilometers, 2,100 meters of climbing it was today. So the major factor was that the big climb of the day would come at Fronties Pass inside the last 20 kilometers. So it was about keeping uh, stocks uh, in the bank for that because that would take a severe toll. 
We see a big group here at the front, but uh, the group certainly thinned out on the Bone Trail and the Three Gorges, so there was a quite a big selection before they reached the Fantis Pass, but uh, it is normal for the Absecape Epic for for some for most of the riders trying to stay together as long as they can, hang on for as long as they possibly can. And we noticed that uh, many of the riders with the predictions of the heat today, um, upwards of 35 degrees, many of the riders choosing to ride with hydration packs and their bottles just to make sure that they have extra fluids or, is, or have enough fluids. Disaster for uh, for the team. Yeah, Peter Pruess and Emmanuel Plim, the uh, team encapsulations, fear encapsulations having all sorts of problems and they don't come much worse than that. A broken rear wheel and that was uh, the end of their day. Whether the end of their, their hopes on the, on the GC, whether they are riding still, we don't know. But uh, meanwhile, the uh, the race continued. Up ahead had gone Paige Eurosteel of the Abs African uh, jersey leaders. Philip Bass and uh, Peter de Toy had bolted from the group very, very early on. Intent, first off, I would think, just as a little bonus to pick up the Dimension Data hotspot, which uh, was in the uh, town of Tilbach and uh, the uh, Church Street uh, Dimension Data hotspot, a, a rarity in. Uh, in uh, the Absecape Epic, but that's, they picked it up and they picked up the bonus finish, there. It, exactly, the sprint finish was uh, is an unusual feature. Normally the hotspots are situated at the top of the climbs and the breakaway from base and uh, well for Team Pygo Eurosteel, they are not the designated first team, the second, um, they're effectively the designated second team, the backup team. Um, but uh, a crash unfortunately scuppered their chances of staying away and uh, here we see them doing just some damage control, doing a uh, working out exactly what happens. Like uh, when you arrive at a scene of an accident, you have to do a vitals check and uh, another vitals yep. check for, uh, for Team Buff Scott, having been placed really well on overall GC. Team Buff Scott uh, are really, it's a carbon copy of what happened to their team yesterday, having to repair a broken chain. Yeah, they uh, really, it was a costly uh, problem for them. Buff Scott did have a team in the lead group though. Vigara and uh, Ruiz were up there in this group that started to become the uh, key group. Two Bulls teams in there, 91 Songo Specialized. Samueli Poro and his partner, uh, Fabian Ravensteiner, were, were in that group. But uh, further back down the field, Lachlan Morton of EF Education. If I, well, he had lost his chain, the broken chain, and had to push his way to the tech zone. Nubele and Zagala here in the Xaro, and the mixed leaders, Sir uh, Laura and Sebastian Stark in the Virgin Act of Mixed going through uh, very comfortable. They would have uh, another impressive day in uh, their category. Peace uh, for the time being as they rolled through the valley floor after the Bone Trail and uh, the uh, Three Gorges section and uh, regathering ahead of the key moment in the day, the Funties Pass climb where the uh, ride would explode. Team Bulls on the front, so Nor Canyon Northway were very prominent at the front there. And 91 Songo Specialized, another Team Bulls, BMC, KTM were in that group as well. The Chasers, well, Paige Eurosteel and Team Ubuko Giant doing all they could to try and regain contact with that group. They weren't able to do so, but they didn't lack for effort in pushing hard to uh, catch them. And the team out front, the uh, seven, seven leading teams. We did see BMC KTM in that uh, group. They were on the back and uh, we expected, well, I certainly expected some good things from them uh, up ahead of the Fantis Pass and just using the flat sections before the big climb of the day and a massive move from uh, Canyon North Wave with uh, following closely is uh, Ravensteiner in the, uh, in the Marathon Championship jersey, the Italian Marathon Championship jersey, and uh, Team Trek Pirelli making some big, taking some big risks on the downhill to catch up with Canyon North Wave, the leading team, and creating a gap back to the overall leaders, 91 Songo Specialized. That was the key for Canyon North Wave to see if they could uh, claw back some of the 2 minutes and 13 seconds uh, deficit they had going into today's stage, and they certainly did so on that climb. Uh, albeit that uh, that group uh, which contained by now just the two Bulls teams and 91 Songo Specialized did make up some ground on the uh, trail down to the bottom of the uh, valley. But the Trek Pirelli pair, well Fabian Rabensteiner and uh, the man who'd suffered most on that climb uh, was his teammate Samueli Poro, was able to close in and join uh, Rabensteiner and together as he comes down now really charging down, taking the risks as uh, Neil 
uh, referred to and joining this group. And this was the, uh, the race winning group uh, that charged towards the finish. Different motivations here, Ravensteiner and uh, Poro looking to make up ground on the general classification after a disappointing start to the uh, Absa Cape Epic. They were looking to claw back time on perhaps uh, the Bulls' second team and move into the top five. And of course, Canyon Northwave looking to uh, close uh, down the gap to the leaders because they were in second place over overnight, closed down to 91 Songo Specialized. We see the ripples after the major climb of the day, after Fanti's Pass and after the Land Rover Technical Terrain section. Just some uh, uphill sections where the, uh, the the chasing team, 91 Songo Specialized, who were at the front trying to close that gap. It was at almost 30, yes, 30 seconds at this point. And uh, all the pressure on the leaders, the general classification leaders to chase. They could see them up ahead, but the winding trails meant that sometimes they were out of sight. And uh, the uh, Canyon Northwave team looking to get some cooperation from Trek Pirelli. They won't get much. Uh, they didn't get much help from from Poro. Poro was struggling at the back, but uh, Raven Steiner did do his turn at the front. Certainly on form, as as it, as denoted by his uh, marathon championships jersey. He is certainly at the moment shown today as the stronger rider of the Trek Pirelli pair, and knowing that they have opportunity now to gain some time on the Bulls and of course on 91 Songo Specialized and even uh, even looked like they had a chance looked like they're going to try for a stage win but not to be Canyon North Wave powered at the front and knowing that an ailing Poro at the back the stage was definitely all for theirs to win yeah, and uh, Sirvold went out early did the old tactic of uh, making sure that uh, they had one man and all uh, Stosek had to do was stay ahead of uh, one of these two men, which he did, in fact, stayed ahead of both. And so it was a first place to Canyon Northwave MTB. And uh, then Trek Pirelli, the Bulls, Uber and Schneller bringing, leading home their second string of uh, Steve John and Fry. And uh, here come uh, the race leaders, 91 Songo Specialized. And they'd lost just around half a minute. The women's race started with an overall lead for the 91 Songo Specialized Pepsina Fry and Laura Stigger of 7 minutes and 32 seconds over Saluzmet with Pace and CST 18 minutes further back as they rolled away from uh, the beautiful Saronsburg. Tactics today, of course, revolved around the final climb of the day. And up until then, it was, uh, I think we've already heard, a lot of tactical uh, right, ra racing and riding. Yeah, and the, the big question really was uh, if uh, some other team than Team 91 Sanko Specialized would take initiative uh, early on and uh, try to, to, to go on an attack or something like that just to, to really see if they could drain the, the energy out of uh, Team 91 uh, Sanko Specialized. But they just showed to be super complete riders. They can do everything, go short, go long, uh, even sprint, uh, as we saw today also. So it's, it's not an easy task to have uh, that uh, team as uh, rivals. Now, key here, Adelaide Morath on the front there, um, number 50, is it 50 or 40? I can't uh, quite see it. And then 60, even, yes, there she is, 60 in, in the blue. Cherie Redeker back, uh, her partner, and uh, Cherie Redeker had a coming together that involved the Mariska Strauss and uh, Candace Lill as well. And uh, Lill and Strauss were able to remount and head off the face of CST team. Uh, twisted handlebars and a lost uh, piece of equipment and it was just a disaster I'm afraid for the computer, sh uh, computer mania team as uh, they weren't able to regain contact with uh, this lead group. We saw a slight disorientation with uh, Sheree Redeker crashes off and uh, breaks the rhythm and um, hopefully she didn't get a knock to the head and uh, hopefully she'll get back on and, um, and, and continue for the rest of the week. The group stayed together pretty much uh, all the way along the valley floor as uh, they just bided their time. Tina Fry and Laura Sticker, Jenny Stenhart, the Swedish champion, going along well with her partner in the fair tree combination, Amy McDougall. And uh, this was uh, Teresa Ralph of Galilea Infinity Risk. It had uh, some grass caught up in her derailleur. And uh, then it was a disaster, I'm afraid, for the Land Rover ladies. Hayley Preen, the South African road race champion, a bad fall. And uh, her partner, Marie Ravi, calling up the medics because uh, she has obtained or she has surmised that it may well be a broken wrist that she suffered. 
up the climb and over the top and it was uh, 91 Songo Specialized. We haven't gone up the climb yet, but they're all together now. This group had broken away from uh, the uh, Faces CST team. We were giving chase. The Faces CST team did a good job to catch, uh, to catch back onto that group, um, certainly putting in some big effort and uh, riding behind them and catch a glimpse of them would be Bart Brenchen's team and uh, so we know that uh, Mariska Strauss does ride for Bart Brenchen's trade team and uh, we would soon see the face of CST, C CST team catch the leaders on the road. And uh, they were not far behind in that dust uh, just behind this. Uh, Ariane Luti, there we go. They just regained contact and immediately Peter Vessel and Bart Brenchen disappeared up the road no longer. Uh, they did get involved uh, in this because this was the key moments uh, in the women's race. Definitely well, it is and we can see as soon as CST faces, uh, faces CST get back to the leading two uh, teams they're happy to take initiative to keep the pace relatively high uh, across the valley before we go into the final steep climb of the day. Amy McDougall and Jenny Stenerhaag uh, just hovering a, a little further back but they would gain advantage today due to the very unfortunate uh, situation with the computer mania team over the thirsty floating bridge of the collections what a beautiful uh, sight this is what a lovely uh, build as well this uh, floating bridge at uh, stage three and this is Liv Lapier, Vera Lossa and uh, Sarah Hill flying over just ahead of uh, Thomas D uh, in fact Isla Stowe was following the uh, women on the e-bike So 91 Songo specialized through the Bath Plus uh, water point and uh, the tech zone. And now only Fanti's climb remained for these riders in terms of uh, serious challenges. And immediately it was Cedar Fry and Laura Sigur went to the front. Yes, and they're really pushing the pace hard. Uh, we heard in the post-race interviews that Laura was suffering big time she did today, she said, but really appreciated the, the companionship of her partner, Sina, letting Laura go to the front, setting the pace up the climb. Really, really important. If one rider feels weaker, you need to let that rider go to the front so the person can ride within his or her limits. Um, it's not only for the morale, it's for everything super important. Well, they were quite extraordinary once again, the, the young uh, Austro-Swiss uh, combination, Lara Stigger on the front and Sina Fry behind her, uh, highly decorated as uh, juniors and under-23s and making great strides as elites at the moment, uh, shaking things up amongst the establishment in the cross-country circuit. Meanwhile, behind them, the experienced uh, marathon racers, Ariane Luti and Robin de Groot were just ticking it over. It was clear that Robin had uh, taken a lot of strain on the Fantis climb and uh, key to their success and their day was uh, how they managed uh, the rest of the uh, stage, just 10 kilometers or so. And uh, Ariane at times did get a little bit ahead, but uh, Robin uh, alerted her and she would uh, drop back in contact. But there was no stopping this pair, quite uh, brilliant again. Yes, and here weaving down the, the final descent, uh, you can see Sina having a quick lower, look over her shoulder. You never really know until you actually know how, how big the gap is and you always want to be as efficient as possible. And uh, you can see, they, from looking from the outside, we're thinking, oh, you have a, a huge gap, but when you're in the race, you actually never know. And it, it wasn't as close as that. That was a highlights back, back so just uh, the gap was quite large, over two minutes by then. This is uh, Candice Hill and uh, her partner, Mariska Strauss, but uh, the way this pair turned on the afterburners on the wide open uh, flat roads uh, in pursuit of the stage win. This is, a, this is one area where Ariane went a little uh, ahead of Robin and then didn't realize she had, was not her wheel. Meanwhile, up ahead, it was the stage win. Number four for this pair of uh, 91 Songo Specialized, Sina Fry and Laura Stigger taking their fourth stage in a row and consolidating their hold on the overall uh, lead, the orange jerseys are theirs. And uh, another second place finish for Ariane Luti and Robin de Groot in the women's race. They lose time, but still in second place on general classification. Behind them faces CST, Candice Lill and Mariska Strauss. They continue to hold the African jerseys, but they again lost a little more time today 
on the overall standings. And this is the podium presentation of Smiling Up, Robin and Ariane. And all plasters on the Mariska, she's had a, she had a torrid old time the last uh, she said in her post grade interview, four falls, so uh, a fall in every day. And credit to Mariska Strauss for keeping going. It's, uh, it's all about consolidating, looking at that, uh, seeing those vital signs and getting back on the bike. Morale is still high. That's really good to, to see. Uh, your body does get sore from, from the, the, the impact. Uh, and that's also where a, ma a massage afterwards can be really nice to just to get the blood going and flushed through, uh, throughout those uh, maybe a little bit swollen areas. Boris Digger, Sina Fry, the uh, stage winners for the fourth time here at the 2021 Absa Cape Epic uh, for song 91 Songo Specialized. And all three teams having a reason to smile. They've survived another day. Um, with their uh, with their podium chances intact, absolutely survived is uh, t is critical today because it's been that sort of day we saw on those highlights uh, what can and does happen. Yeah, so yeah. many factors at play, especially the heat today will play a major factor with the uh, certainly with the leaders and also with the amateurs. As we see here, Cena Fry, 91 Songa Specialized, they've kept their lead and in fact extended it. Yeah. And now today was uh, day four, finished out of eight days. Uh, as a rider, this is a mentally important point in the race because now you start counting down the days instead of counting up the days, and it makes all the difference. You can, you feel like you're getting closer and closer, and it makes it easier to, to manage the massive fatigue that you will be feeling uh, at this point uh, in the race. Candice just encouraging Mariska to come and join her. And so she should. The face of CST team are the uh, Absa Africa jersey leaders at the moment. And uh, well, they are in good spirits, aren't they? Seems to be a signature move with the uh, wine bottle at the end. Right, let's now go down to the finish at what is becoming increasingly baking hot at uh, Saronsburg. Let's go down to Liesel. Zorro jersey holders currently 10 minute lead in GC how are you feeling oh we excited um, about we are leading and yeah and we try just to stay with them but we want to stay let they go but and to finish we want to attack them but we are glad we're still leading do you think 10 minutes is enough time no no <laughs> 10 minutes is not enough but we can put more in but uh, it's still still long and tell me about the thirsty floating bridge. Sure. What did happen? It was was very very fast and fast and smooth. And and my partner was struggling today. The last climb, I see me struggling a lot. But you can keep the jersey. That's that's important. You get to keep the jersey. Teamwork today. And the bridge at the thirsty floating bridge. I heard you guys laughing about something there. What happened? No, my partner say, oh, a big crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, yo, you see that big one? Is and I said, no, man, it's a plastic one. <laughs> Scared. <laughs> but yeah, we have enjoyed the bridge. I was like, <laughs> nice, well done. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome all. It's Melissa Butelez from Exaro Resources. So we've been a development partner with the Cape Apti for the last 10 years where we've given opportunity to previously disadvantaged riders to actually participate and race with the professionals in a mountain biking space. Having to race with the Exaro Cage, we also have something that we can know that we are training for to also walk away at home feeling proud. To be here, you must really have uh, qualified and, uh, and also just do your best because you, know, you deserve to be here. Marathon is, the, is my best. Best, best way, yeah. There's no turning back. I'm preparing for a climb. The main point was just to focus, not to crash. And, yeah. It's always the best experience ever to get to share the same field as, you know, the best riders in the world. The race is on. The guys are really hungry. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, Xara Academy, very much uh, an integral part of the uh, Absolute Cape Epic and indeed the mountain biking uh, landscape here in South Africa as so it brings riders uh, uh, right forward and uh, giving them an opportunity to race here. 
This is the result of stage three then in the men's race. Andreas Sevelt and uh, his partner Martin Storsek of Canon Northwave MTB winning the stage today. 3.41.47, a phenomenal ride by them up the key climb of the day. And they managed to uh, find allies in Trek Pirelli over the last uh, nine kilometers or so. Eventually helped them to get uh, a 19 second lead over Uber and Schneller. Brian Stibdion, 22 seconds back. And the overall race leaders, Jordan Saru and uh, Matthew Beers, 91 Songo Specialized, lost 30 seconds today. So a dynamic is changing slowly but surely in the men's uh, GC. Making and Diaz uh, well, they overcame uh, issues today of a broken chain, lost 8.29. So they worked hard to get that back. Very well done indeed. Peter de Toy and Philip Bass were on the Dimension Data hotspot. And then had a fall to toy, managed to hold it together to finish in ninth place, just ahead of uh, the another South African. In fact, uh, three more South African teams. Juban De Lange, Vimbuka, Giant Insects, Insect Science, and uh, Type Dev Nano Time, 10, 11, and 12. All young riders uh, keen to race, which is wonderful. Pemon and Gidi from FNB Change of Life winning the uh, Xaro stage today. So uh, things not going all the way of uh, uh, Tobangunia and LaRue. General classification looks like this. 143, the gap to uh, Sievold and Storsek going into stage four, a transition stage as we move away from Saronsberg. Uber and Schneller, 353 back, still in the uh, frame there. Very definitely are Fry and Stiebjan, and they could well play an important role if the Bulls are to have uh, a position on the top step of this uh, podium because uh, the uh, support of a second team is vital. Becking and Diaz lost places. They're in sixth place now with their teammates just behind them. Join base eighth overall, three African teams in the top ten. That's uh, impressive riding by those three. BMC, KTM, slowly trying to work their way back into the top ten after finishing second in the prologue in Cape Town. And LaRue and Tobangunia, they are ten minute lead in the uh, Xaro category. They are well clear in that, but uh, they know they'll have to keep it going if they want to win that category. The women's race today won for the fourth day in a row by the 91 Songo specialized pair of Sina Fry and Laura Stigger. 4.30, 4.33, ahead of Ariane Luti and Robin de Gruet, who were the uh, elastic snapped on the climb up uh, Fanti's Pass, and uh, they leaked time from there on in. And de Gruet uh, took a lot of strain over the latter stages of the stage. Lillen Strauss overcame an early crash to finish in third place, comfortably ahead of Stenach and McDougall, finished fourth today, Hill and Lawser in fifth place and uh, recovery Adelaide Morath and Sheree, Sheree Riddiker live to find another day although they did lose uh, over 35 minutes today for computer mania the race did lose the Land Rover ladies today sadly through an injury to Haley Preen but uh, the six top six look like this Ryan Stigger with 11 minutes and 15 seconds. Lil and Strauss, 24-19. Stenach and McDougall now up to fourth place. Morath and Redeker, well, their threat to their position in fifth will come at a threat from Hill and Losa for the rest of the week. The Liv Lapier racing pair, one hour and 11 minutes behind. Their overall leaders, the brilliant Sina Fry and Laura Stigger. In the Apps African jerseys, well, seven minutes around uh, that has been pretty much constant throughout the uh, the race. Dutoy and Base hold on to that. Tristan Nokia and Vessel Boerter from Type Dev Nano Time hang on to uh, second place, but only just as Marco Joubert and Tristan De Lange put pressure on them. Nokia is a teammate of Joubert and De Lange regularly, but he's formed up this team with. Uh, Missile boot of type dev nano time for this event only. So there's uh, not much between those two. There'll be a great rivalry going on there. <laughs> there it is, just eight minutes, in fact, 11. Tilala and Debele won yesterday's stage, uh, and Gidi and Pewa won today's stage for the FB Change of Life Academy. So uh, 22 minutes back they are, but Leroux and Tobangunia will want to keep it going because Salala and Nebele are looking strong for Xara PWC. The general classification in the uh, Virgin Active Mixed is led by Laura and Sebastian Stark who put together another superb ride today. 
They're 40 minutes clear of the Swiss pair of Michael and Schneider with the Dimension Data Masters. 39 minutes, the gap now between Müller and Bachmann and the leaders, Craig Uriah and Andrew Divinage of her team Restonic. And the Grand Masters today's stage went the way of Hans-Jürgen Kerber and Barty Bucher. Closed the gap to just a minute and four seconds to Bart Brench and St. Peter Vessel. That race is going to be so, so good. Marnie Hammonds and Carsten Bresser, nearly half an hour adrift off the leaders. Tomorrow, stage four, this is what is in store for the riders. It is a uh, slightly shorter stage at 73 kilometers, but four days in the legs. Yes, but as a rider, uh, mentally it gives you a little bit of a, of a break, just knowing that you have less kilometers, uh, less altitude meters, less time out there suffering. Um, it's a nice refreshing break for the mind to really regain and focus and, and gain energy for the rest of the race. The challenges tomorrow, Neil? Well, we're looking at Blueberry Hill where the selection could really happen. And if it doesn't happen on the climb before, it'll certainly there'll be a, a major thinning out of the group on Blueberry Hill. There is some single track shortly afterwards, and uh, before they reach Slunghook Trails, there's a, there's a sharp rise. And then on Slunghook Trails, they'll need to get in good position before that section. It is single track, and then one final kick up before the, uh, the downhill section, Slunghook, and the remote finish. Right, so who's going to win tomorrow? <laughs> Well, Trek Pirelli was looking good today. Uh, having a shorter stage tomorrow could maybe suit them. Neil. Um, I predicted today that Team BMC KTM would do well, so I think I'm going to try and stick to that. And if I stick to that all week, I might eventually, uh, get, might eventually right. get lucky. Okay. And the women's uh, were looking uh, good for Sina and, and, and Laura again. Yeah, unfortunately, you have to say that on paper, tomorrow's stage is looking even better for them than today. So. We'll see. Right. Well, who's it going to be tomorrow? Well, there's one place to find out. That's right here. Thanks for joining us uh, on our coverage of Stage 3. Thanks to Neil. Thanks to Annika. Thanks to Stefan, to Thomas, to Isla out there. And thanks to Lisa on the finish line. And thanks to you for joining us. You know where we'll be tomorrow morning. Please be with us there. From us all here, cheers.
I came from the mud.